It's Tim's 60th anniversary. There's only a few days left for roll up to win, baby. Woo. What's with the oh. What's with the arms? Why are the Why are you guys? I'm doing the blown work? away by how excited this is. It's, oh. it's a very exciting time. Listen, all electric Volkswagen ID4, a sun soaked Tilton vacation, or even some major cash with the daily jackpot of ten thousand dollars, sponsored by Tim's Financial. Maybe you'll have a friend lucky enough to win and take you to San Diego. Woo! Maybe. Maybe. Maybe, or maybe they'll take someone who will actually appreciate it. I think I would appreciate YouTube, San Diego, okay? San Diego has an amazing zoo. Yes, they do. Yeah. And that is my that, passion. I think we found out why wow. Steve loves San Jesse Diego. Jesse Blake figured so it out. Maybe while I'm there, I can apply for a job so I can escape you two clowns. Uh, earn rolls on your Tim's faves, including hot or iced coffee, breakfast sandwiches, loaded bowls, and more. Make sure to play on the Tim's app. Available for download on the App Store or Google Play. Tim's 60th anniversary of uh, edition, excuse me, of Roll Up the Rim is on now until March 31st. Time to get rolling. Rolls apply. Canada only. No purchase necessary for contest entry. Visit the Tibbs app for details. Let's start the show. Yeah. Steve. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. And so I do not knock this over. I'm going to put this on the ground. Or should I just leave it over here? I'll leave it over there. Leave it over there. Stop fidgeting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Stop fidgeting. You're asking us? Or I don't know. Are you solving know. this on your own I, by mumbling? Guys, I was thinking out loud. <laughs> I was Ed Sheeran thinking out loud. Uh, you know, here we, we found love just where gonna, we are. No, I'm not going to. What are we going to do here? Let me try something. I got dinner at 8, and then I got to go home. Actually, the way I wanted to start the show. Friday show on a Thursday. What are we doing I didn't want to start the show that way. Start with Tim Hortons or not. Oh my god, that farmer's rap's got me in a chokehold. I got it. Um, what was it? I don't know what I've done to these two to deserve this, but this week has not been a good week for me. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. week has not been a good week mm-hmm. for me. Uh, I want to start the it's show. Been with a great something. week for the Preds. You, Sorry, do, what? Do you uh, ever start? Do you ever like? Um, do you ever like? Look at things and you're like, ooh, that's gross. And you're like, I need to look at it harder. I'm doing it right now. Oh, oh. Steve's looking at me, by the way. Um, um like like yeah. you know, like like pimple popping videos on TikTok or like ingrown hairs or oh, they yeah. go into your ear and they remove all the earwax. Oh, mm-hmm. the cow hoof guy. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesse, yeah, I sent you a text. Mm-hmm. And I want you to bring this up. Cause this is this is the craziest photo I have seen in a long, should long time. Should I not look at his... You should not look at his... Monitor? This is a crazy photo. Okay. Um, and it is it is of a human arm, mm-hmm. but when you see it, you're not going to believe that it could be. Okay. Should I put on my spectacles? You're going to need your specs for this. Oh, Maddie just reacted quite viscerally. So that is... This is a guy throwing a football. Steve, look at this, the screen. Ah! <laughs> <Whoa>! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> no! That looks like AI. So that is um, LSU quarterback and top three potential pick Jaden Daniels. Not anymore. It's not scheduled to meet with the Pats, Commanders, Giants and Vikings this weekend, according to Ian Rappaport. Um, uh, Yeah, he has not previously met with any of those teams. Um, There is a doctor that um, commented underneath this post. And it appears that the elbow is uh, bursitis. So it's, it's just it's inflammation. Yes, yeah. gigantic inflammation and yeah. very very painful. Yeah, when you're in, when you're a quarterback at you're playing for LSU, it's D1 football. You're bound to get some inflammation in your elbow. Yeah, that's what it, that's what's going on. Right? Oh, so it's not well. It looks for anyone not li- uh, or only listening, it looks dislocated. It looks like he has a golf ball attached to the end of his where his elbow yeah. is. Or or. Or his forearm was a, a, like a piece of Lego that they plugged into his his actual <laughs> yeah. bicep. Like it's just it yeah. doesn't. They don't look like they belong to the same appendage. No. Well, now that you mention it, yeah, it does. Yeah, I could see how that'd be like a pimple or whatever. A <laughs> yeah. Bursitis. What is, what is, bursitis. Is the bursitis. bursitis. I've heard of the it. term. Uh, bursitis is something that used to keep David Clarkson out of the lineup for the Toronto Maple Leafs. That's no. right. Inflammation hey. of the bursus. That's wow. Bursus. This, 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 this. And it's pretty bad. Anyway, there's, uh, I guess there's people were commenting underneath, and there are plenty of shots with uh, uh, QBs with bursitis. There you go. Like Jesse said. Hey. Anyway. That's quite the still, though. <laughs> I, wanted to sh- I wanted to share something gross to start the show. Thank are you, you going to. I'm awake. Are you going to apologize? Apologize for what? For the Fuller incident? I'm not going to apologize for the Fuller incident because everybody <laughs> pointed out where the Fuller name came from, and it's Home Alone 2. A different film. No, and, and Home Alone 1 as well. Mm. Can, I, can I play the original clip? No. What? Why are we going? I think you should. 
We already did this. Yeah, but no, but I didn't get the oh, play Jesse back. Oh, Jesse got mad at us for bringing up the torch stuff yesterday, but now we got to bring the whole thing I didn't up. get mad at you for bringing up the torch stuff. I wanted you to get to the video quicker. Okay. All right. All right. Fine. Replay Fine. the whole Fuller episode. This was Adam Wilde on Friday. This is what That's me, said. stupid. This oh. is what Adam Wilde on Friday said about the movie A Christmas Story. Oddly oh, okay. enough, in my house, ass was considered a swear word. Really? Yeah, there was no ass. Um, stupid was considered a swear word in my house until we got in the car. <laughs> and then everybody it was, was all the colors of the rainbow. <laughs> and I knew I've, every ever, word by grade one. Have you ever seen A Christmas Story? With the, yeah. the, 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 the the Red Rider BB gun With rifle or whatever. whatever everyone and he who's says, in oh, it? fudge. And he's like, only I didn't say fudge. I said the word, the big one. And then he said the F word. And... And his mom is like washing his mouth out with soap, which was a thing people did. Yes. And uh, and uh, what was hilarious about that is he's like, he, he's like, I had to tell her that Fuller, his friend, said it rather than my dad every time he got in the car, right? Because right. he's like, and this has become one of the biggest controversies ever. On How our, is this on our Discord? Who cares, man? <laughs> Because because they solved it. They, Fuller is from Home Alone, the original or Home yeah, Alone Two. Both of them, and he's oh, okay. it's Kieran Culkin from uh, Succession. No, so, so yeah. you messed up Kieran Culkin. You thought he was in a Christmas story. I got my Christmas movie scrambled. I need a Fuller shirt, and I think Fuller is the one that's like, <laughs> "Well, back off on the fluids, kid. The rubber sheets are packed." You remember that from the first, where he's like, "No, oh, I do so, not." You don't no, remember that line? No, no. I, I don't remember anything. Pee in the bed. He, he doesn't want to sleep with Fuller. Like he's like, "Oh, your brother's got to share beds or whatever." He's like, "I don't want to sleep with him. He always wets the bed because he's always drinking co uh, Coca Cola." Before that bed. was in a Christmas story. That was in <laughs> Home Alone one and two. Jesse, <laughs> you guys are so mean. So I was more. I cannot wait that. to find out. That's actually from like Miracle on Thirty yeah. Street or we're like some <laughs> no, other Christmas. Here's how I can guarantee because people actually sent me the clip and they're like, oh, I think this is what you mean. Oh, really? John Tavares sent it to you? Yeah. <laughs> Adam, Adam, I think you were uh, mistaken. <laughs> I don't think I've ever received so many like tweets or DMs about like, oh, it was actually this movie. It was intense. People are love their Christmas movies, Adam, they and do. how dare you? You know what? I had I really didn't think that this would be a thing. Like, how could you? you oh, never how could I have predicted this? Why do you prep a show? I don't know. I think you're wasting a lot of time. I know. I always just come in here and just, what, what you, what's on the top of your head? Let's go. Hair. <laughs> <Christmas> what up, 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 up. Holy shit. Weekend's coming. Let's now, go. Now, uh, uh, do we have any more that we need to share? Is there anything else? No, I think we, we finally solved it. Okay, we have litigated this. Fuller is not from a Christmas story. That's great. It is Kieran Culkin in Home Alone. I want to stick to my original point, which is he <laughs> says in the movie that he learns the swear word from his dad. Yeah. He hurts his dad say it all the time. But, you know, yeah. that's what I meant to say. That was the point of what I was mm -hmm. trying to say. Thanks for everybody I don't, hitting the point I don't right on the head. what your point was. The point is you were wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's the point. You know what? <laughs> no, I've never you know met what? him. Hey, 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 I'm friggin' punchy today. Let's go. Uh, hey guys, did you hear about uh, uh, Alexander Ovechkin's diet? Uh, yes, it's um, mine. Uh, <laughs> Alexander Ovechkin, uh, Russian machine never breaks. Had this really great post. Um, Ovechkin's quote borderline inspiring diet includes gas station. Sub and flaming hot Cheetos. Uh, so he, oh, were they flaming hot? Yeah, he was seen because they were boarding the plane to Toronto, and the uh, cap social media people were taking pictures of them. Oh, uh, he's gonna score six goals. Tonight, and and he was having yeah, he was having some Subway and some Cheetos. And the Leafs have approximately zero players. O Ovechkin, and he's eating flaming hot Cheetos. They're, we're gonna die. He uh, it's already documented by Russian Machine that he loves Italian subs. The Italian, the spicy Italian sub includes spicy pepperoni, salami, and cheese. You can also toss on peppers, oil, vinegar, and quoting Subway, anything else your taste buds desire. Uh, the foot log includes double cheese and extra mayo. As Ovechkin um, uh, walked away, they, the assumption is that he would be su assuming some, somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,200 calories a sub and astonishing 3,000 milligrams of sodium. Uh, but you got to remember, <laughs> these are hockey players, and they burn calories. And it, does much, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They can eat anything they want. Yes. Um, God, mm. dream. Yeah, he also likes to drink. He's been caught drinking soda on the bench, and he likes to eat, uh, eat chicken parm before home games. That's that's. I mean, probably the most normal hockey player thing you just said that he likes to have chicken parm. Yeah, I, I think people think that because Nathan McKinnon is that way is one way that everybody's that way. No, and no, Nathan McKinnon's different. 
That's no, why it's a story. Chickpea pasta is different. It's every hockey player for several generations was chicken parm. Like the mm -hmm. first Italian pasta. broke into, like Phil Esposito broke into the NHL. And that's how everyone ate for about 40 years. Yeah. Yeah. And then it changed. And maybe a coffee and a couple cigarettes. Uh, yeah. You no. Know? Yeah. You got to watch yes. it down with a couple cigs, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to go out there and score 76 goals or whatever Mario Lemieux got. Yeah. There is. There is. Like, dude. He's got a full head of like grayish white hair, giant ass sub, and flaming hot Cheetos. Louis Vuitton backpack. Louis Vuitton backpack. Because why not? Best goal scorer in NHL history. Yeah, why not? I respect it. Mama, there goes that man. I want to remind you that uh, Jack Eichel is also one of these guys who gets a little crazy with what he eats. Whoa. I, I know we've brought this up before, but I, I still love this quote. I wake up, I go to the rink, I have egg whites, oatmeal, strawberries, then I have apple juice, then I have Gator Light, and then I have Gatorade, and then I tape my sticks and I get on the ice, and I go for the pregame skates, and then I get off, and then I get a flush massage in my legs, and then I get in the shower, and then I get in the cold tub for four minutes, then I get out and go home. And Sam Reinhart, we live together, and now he lives four houses from me, picks up our pregame meal at a restaurant that we like. I go pick it up at his house, I grab it, I eat it at 12.30, 12 to 1-ish. We're only halfway through his day. He did all of that to miss the playoffs six consecutive years with the Sabres. <laughs> like, <laughs> excuse me, that Stanley Cup winner, Jack Eichel. Well, no, yeah, but he went to Vegas and then he started having the buffets. Right. I made that up. I don't know. I don't know if that's actually true. I feel like that's isn't that the right way to do it? You're no, a professional no. athlete. You should take care of your body and try and prolong this thing as long as you can. Yeah, well, that's a great point, Jesse. Here, uh, mm. counterpoint. Maddie, can you bring up Jesse's laptop? That's my counterpoint right there. Alexander Ovechkin, hot Cheetos, Subway, giving nary a shit. I feel like this is the exception. Nope, that's the rule. I feel like the McKinnon mm -mm. Eichel mentality is going to prolong like to your know. What have those guys ever done? <laughs> Besides accomplish the same things as Alexander Ovechkin. I feel like that's more common amongst newer athletes nah. as opposed to I'm going to eat Subway and Cheetos and be the greatest goal scorer of all time. Yeah, like I don't think Sidney Crosby's eating Subway and Cheetos. No, game. no. I agree with you. Yeah. I, I, know that. I didn't know that would be a hot take to you, Steve. I, you're telling that me that eating healthy no. is probably the right way to go. Really? You didn't think that I thought that? <laughs> <laughs> really? You want to do a mini fat guy corner? <laughs> oh, mini, oh, Ooh. mini fat mini guy fat corner. Mini fat guy corner. Wait, is that, is that an oxymoron? Mini fat guy. Oh, okay. Well, we just got to do a. Well, no, we have fatter fat guy corner. Okay, fair enough. Fair yeah, enough. What, what you got? Give me, give me something. Uh, you're telling me Sidney Crosby. See, Jesse won't appreciate this, Adam. Mm. You're telling me Sidney Crosby's never had a fish and chips down at the lower deck. Oh, or fried pepperoni <laughs> oh. with a little honey that? mustard. Lower Deck is, I think it's the greatest place in the world. It's uh, the greatest bar that you've never yet been to, but one day mm. we will go. We'll go do a live show in Halifax, and we'll do it at the Lower Deck. Yeah. Halifax. It's yeah. the best bar in the place with the most bars per capita in North America. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, then, and then we're going to the Dome after. Uh, uh, no, we're going. I don't know. We're going. We the Dirty That's Dome? Yep. We'll end up with syphilis, but we're going. I'm kidding. Oh, I'm wow. totally kidding. It's a joke. Wow. It's a joke. Jeez, it's a joke. Adam. I went to the dome plenty of times and never got syphilis. Well, um, after oh. getting busted for tax evasion, hey. that's an Al Capone. Joke. <laughs> um, well, uh, yeah, no, the fish and chips there. It's like you go to like any like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go see like a band at a bar. You don't expect the food to be like five star. No, it's just good. If you can do good greasy food, it's great. <sighs> now the fish and chips at the lower deck. I want it in my life. Um, didn't uh, um, didn't Michael Phelps eat a lot of Subway and stuff too? Didn't he like when? He well, he was sponsored by Subway. Oh, but I don't know if he ever ate it. <laughs> he know? had to eat like twelve thousand calories a day. I remember that. Yeah, my, I think Michael Phelps could like, find a way to eat Subway every day and be perfectly fine because of how many calories he burned. I remember yeah. the yeah, that video or that CNN interview or wherever it was where he talked about what he ate in a day and it's like what a family eats in a week. Yes, yeah, yeah he eats that every single day. And he could like if a normal person ate like that. And again, athletes are not normal. Yeah, um, you'd 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 be sick. You'd be vomiting. I want a floorball tournament. You want to that you're right. But you can't eat like Michael Phelps can eat. No, I can't. Or could eat anyway. I can't. My question is always, um, how do you stop eating that? Like, does your body just naturally need less once you're trained? Like if you're Michael Phelps now, 
He's probably working out. He's probably doing a bunch of training and, and motivational speaking and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. smoking hey, weed without hey, getting caught. Yeah, hey kids, yeah. don't, don't remember smoke, don't smoke was, weed. When that was a giant con- controversy, sure. he was caught with the bong in his hand. Greatest Olympian of all time. <laughs> but what if he didn't ingest cannabis? <laughs> like, you know? Well, it was anyway. like um, it was like when Bill Bill Clinton was like, uh, yes, I, I there I, I took a toke off a joint in college, but I never inhaled. I never inhaled. Um, and and then Obama was like, I I inhaled. I thought that was the point. <laughs> the, uh, that Robin Williams bit about the Canadian snowboarder who won gold, but Berbigliati, Berbigliati, who had um, friggin' weed you, you, in the system. Yeah, he tested he's like, me. it's a performance enhancing drug. Yeah. <laughs> but to answer uh, your question, Adam, I think you see a lot of athletes, ex ath pro athletes, uh, gain that weight in their retirement because they keep up that eating regime and not sure. the athletic regime. That happens a lot. I think you find with pro athletes in their uh, later stage of their lives. But you also find guys like it's easy to ad- bodies are very adaptable. If you just stop eating like that, your body will adapt eventually. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't think they have that too much trouble. It just depends on which way you go. What do you think like the deepest parts of Michael Phelps's mammalian brain think hmm. like that he's just being chased by wolves every day? And that's, right. And that's what we need. This we, we need this because he burns. I don't know what he's doing, but the amount of energy we're using every day, I think something is trying to kill him from dawn till dusk. Yeah, and that's how you become the greatest Olympian ever. Ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ever. And then you stop one day and, oh, I guess I guess they all fell off. Your, your body must be broken for a few years just to understand what it's supposed to do in these moments. Oh. I think. Yeah. Like, he's got to, like, wean himself off of swimming that much, I assume. I think so much I would of love being to an elite athlete is just not getting hurt. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes we mm-hmm. we the there, we went to school with i mean everyone's got this story we went to school with this guy who could have been in the olympics for nine events and uh just one day his shoulders went you know what that's enough that's enough and he's got like shot shoulders i'm talking shot and he's like 21 mm-hmm no, you you like I think you nailed it. Like most of the majority of being an athlete is injury prevention. If you're just healthy long enough, you'll be good. Yeah. Like I have you ever heard the this feels like a VIP episode. Have you ever uh heard of um they uh, the, so they, they some scientists did some study where they estimate you know cuz the the world record for the 100 meter dash is like 9.5 seconds. If it gets down, like 7.5 is the fastest a human could possibly do because yeah. of that, you, their body will tear apart. You can't go faster than that in terms of physics, yes. 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 Uh, yeah, for most people. <laughs> Until some guy, like we're going to be old dudes in our diapers, but like someone's going to run in like six. I don't know. Who, like, was, who was the billionaire? Was it Peter Thiel who was like, I'm going to fund the steroid Olympics? Oh, Finally, man. Yeah. That came out like yeah. last month. Yeah. That was a big news story. It was like a news cycle for like four hours, how the news runs now. But yeah. Like, yeah. There's the steroid Olympics are coming. and Which are just the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, yeah. like, what are we, are we kidding Let's ourselves? Like, we already have them, Peter. Don't waste your money. You can waste it on something yeah. else. What's what's the saying? Um, it's not a drug test anymore. It's an IQ test. Yeah. Yes. That's that's the exact phrase. Yeah. That's uh, that's what it's become in 2024. Like it's too the where the steroids or not they're not steroids, but where the I guess nutrients that the athletes yes. are taking the are, vitamins are above what they're testing for, and they are always ahead of the game. Man, a lot of a lot of guys are eating tainted beef. Have you noticed that? <laughs> <laughs> it's always the tainted beef. We can we can do this. And then you can get to what you actually want to talk about. Adam. No, no, let's do whatever. But here's Michael Phelps' uh, what he eats in a day let's for go. breakfast. Let's fucking go. Three fried, eggs san- three, three fried egg sandwiches with cheese, tomatoes, lettuce, fried onions, and mayonnaise, followed by three cho- chocolate chip pancakes. What? Um, that was not all. After sandwiches and pancakes, it was time for a five egg omelet, three sugar coated slices of French toast, a bowl of grits, and two cups of coffee to wash everything down. To, for to lunch? wash everything down, kids, that's not what he means. Continue. To clear everything out. To poop it out. For lunch, he would have a half kilogram of pasta. A half kilogram! Two large ham and cheese sandwiches on white bread smothered with mayonnaise and another set of energy drinks. For dinner, a pound of pasta with carbonara sauce, a large pizza, and energy drinks. This would make up around 10,000 calories a day, which should ideally feed five average men a day. Wow. That was like, NBC. Y- you'd, you'd die. You would die. 
Do you know <laughs> the percentage of the population that would try this and die within the month? Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. All right, YouTube video. YouTube, I, yeah, uh, for the content. I <laughs> ate like Mel Michael Phelps for a day. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm here doing fat guy cook. <laughs> uh, hope you guys are ready to shorten it from SDP to P. <laughs> Hi, it's S and P. Hi, it's podcast. <laughs> um, Steve's dead. He tried to do an Olympic thing. Because he won a floorball tournament once. We call that hubris, kids. I like this. I like where this topic is going. By the way, speaking of athletes, Jesse, you mentioned earlier about uh, athletes that like they their bodies adjust down and then they, you know, um, they you know they put on a bunch of weight or whatever. Remember when Shaq put out that photo like a year ago where he had a he had just got jacked because he put on some weight obviously mm -hmm. in his career and then put it on Shaqed. after and you. then he got. Huge. Have you seen? I don't remember. No, I don't remember. Okay, that. So yeah. can you try? Okay, I'm gonna try to find Shaq. This is. I weird. believe you. I believe you. topless. <laughs> Shaq topless. <laughs> Not topless. my favorite internet search. <laughs> so put Shaq topless and delicious. Here, okay. Sorry. Tell me this isn't crazy. All right. Tell me this isn't crazy. Well, um, how old is he? Uh, well, he's in his. He's got to be in his 60s. Right or or late fifties at least. The way crazier photo is the Ernie Johnson one from yesterday. Oh my God, the, from the ghost from Ghostbusters. Yeah, seventy nine, seventy eight. How dare you? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yo, Problem. okay. Here's the crazy thing. Would you imagine Shaq, but with abs? Because he has them. Not too, Abby. There you go. It was very good. Is there? Please, it's just should be a photo. That video. Is the, the oh boo men's health you suck you suck men's health anyway go look it up whatever here it is, here it is. there he is this. look at that guy look at diesel wow like henry henrik's comment there sexy sexy dude <laughs> henrik dude yeah crazy i imagine crazy. that dude 20 years younger and just trying to stop him I'm gonna dunk a basketball. No you're not Shaq actually I am <laughs> that's and crazy he does he that's that man is built He's a yeah. <laughs> that's a that's a literal diesel. Like you can see why they called him that. I I do think about that too. Like you look at that and you go, I would not want to stand in front of that man. No. And anybody that did, that really sucks. Mm -hmm. Imagine going to a, like a you're playing the Lakers. You got Kobe on the outside, and then you got to face that in the paint. Uh, that's not a good basketball body. No. Uh, th no. Shut up. <laughs> no, honestly, no. He didn't look like that when he was playing for a reason. Oh, like you ever oh, look oh. at Kevin Durant? Like, yeah, oh, I know. Like, this isn't this isn't the greatest basketball body, right? He's just like, doing that for a step. Yeah, now he's he's fifty and All not right. playing in the NBA. I think we can take that off the screen. He's, yeah, he's just he rubbing his abs <laughs> at this point. And it's making me. <laughs> you know what? I bet the views are going up. The views are going up. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think so? So tonight, do this the rest of the episode. Uh, the Leafs will be without Mitch Marner. Austin Matthews and potentially, and also Callie Yarncroke, and potentially without uh, Morgan Riley too. We're not sure. He's yet. still day to day. Yeah, so he's out. So and Edmondson. So if you're betting on the Washington Capitals, as I am, to make the playoffs, you might have made a good bet. Now I'd like to see the Leafs put up a fight here. My question to you guys is: You're missing your number one center. Mm -hmm. Your number two center got called out by the coach just a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. What do you want to see from the Toronto Maple Leafs against the hard-charging and super surprising Washington Capitals? What do you need to see? I want them to treat it like it's not a scheduled loss uh, because you're actually coming off of back-to-back -back regulation losses, which you're not all that accustomed to. Yeah. The Leafs don't lose back-to-back -back games in regulation very often anymore. They definitely don't lose three. So, you know, uh, you might come across injuries in the playoffs. You know... Like one of the last great memories uh, that we have of the Leafs actually going on a deep run, when the Leafs went to the conference final in 2002, they didn't have Sundin for like half of it because it was the legend of Alan McCauley coming out of nowhere. It's for, for the kids out there who don't know, it's the equivalent of like Austin Matthews going down. And Pontus Holmberg carried the le uh, carried the Leafs through like a round and a half. You're saying he couldn't do it. I'm You're saying Pontus Holmberg couldn't yeah. carry the Leafs. <laughs> I'm saying the Alan McCauley earned every dime after that uh, little stint. I believe in Pontus Holmberg. I listen. A lot of people didn't think Alan McCauley could do what he did, and then he did it. 15 points in 20 games that playoff. Yeah, there you go. Alan McCauley stepped into his slot, and Gary Roberts um, was like, Gary Roberts was just. Uh, a terror um, through that whole thing. But like, you know, uh, Holmberg 
in the middle of Nyes and Robertson. It's an interesting idea. Hold on. Can I just stop you for a second? Why? Oh. Alan McCauley, yep. in that playoffs, I told you he had five goals, 10 assists, 15 points, right? Mm-hmm. Do you know that during the season, he had play, he played 82 games. He had six goals, 10 assists for 16 points. This is what I'm saying. Hmm. It's all. It's a very wow. apt comparison. <laughs> I think it's, it's uh, Tavares, Domi, I would go. Oh, up the middle tonight? Holmberg. Kampf. Uh, How's that? Uh, yeah, they're probably going to have to do something like that. Yeah. Would you switch out? Would you do? Who would you do instead? Maybe Willie, even though that's no, a, that's a million know. times failed experiment. No. Yeah. Um, Everybody's like, no, no I, please, God. <laughs> I think you got it. Oh, oh boy. So wait, do they have lines? Adam? I haven't seen any no. from Mark Masters yet. I haven't seen. Try any. Alter. Okay. Try David Alter. That is. Uh, but it's funny on the way down here. Uh, I was thinking about the idea of the playoff roster. No lines. And mm-hmm. Okay. I was thinking about the idea of the playoff roster. And you know what's starting to grow on me big time? Is the idea of splitting Austin, Willie, and Mitch up mm-hmm. on three different lines. Um, I think they can that. do it. I got it. That. I got it. Okay. Here's what I'm going to do. We're going to do a little Leafs. Who who playing with who? Who? who where they play for. Where they play for. Um. All right. So what do you think, Jesse and Steve, the first line is you can work together on this? Because we got to move through it. A little bit quicker. I'm going to say Tavares with Bertuzzi and Willie. Sure. Is that what you want? Sure. It's Bertuzzi, Domi, Marner. At Marner. practice. Those are the lines of practice. But he's not playing. Well. Yeah, Marner's, Marner's out for so, at least the, the so, next two games. Okay, so, hang, so let's keep going here. Hang on. You know what? That actually bodes well for my prediction. That, that it's going to be three uh, uh, Willie... Mitch and Austin on three different lines. Anyway. Okay. Uh, next line. What do you think? Okay. Well, Tavares has to be on this one. Yep. Uh, Tavares with Robertson and McMahon. Nylander McMahon. Damn. And then you got Nyes, Holmberg, Robertson, uh, Dewar, Kampf, Reeves. So I wonder, and, and Gregor is the extra skater. So here's my question. <laughs> here's my question, gentlemen. Does Gregor come in? Because if Martyr's not going to play, he's not supposed to play till April. On the first line? No, I don't think that. But I, if if you were going to move somebody up, to me, does it not make sense to move Robertson beside Domi and Bertuzzi, give him a shot? 100%. And then Gregor goes in on the third line because you got the speed with Gregor. Uh, I mean, you need to... Robertson, I think we can agree on the fourth line is a waste of time. Mm-hmm. And that's why the Leafs have done it like two games all season. Um, give him a shot. Why not? This is the time to step up. Give him a shot. He was pissed about being sent down. Here's your, cha- here's your chance. Here's your chance. We're going to put you on the top line. We're going to give you 13, 14, 15 minutes. Yep. Um, give it a shot. Uh, do the Leafs instead go, is it better to go 11-7? Because you could mm. you could sit Gregor, although it doesn't make sense to sit Gregor. You could. And obviously Marner's not playing. But here's the question. It's it's the, the defense lines are McCabe, Lilligren, because we we want to do this, Brody Labushkin, uh, Benoit Timmons, and then Giordano is the extra skater. I don't know if he's been cleared to to play yet. No, Giordano is not playing. No, he's he's cleared. He's cleared. Yeah, you th- yeah. and you think he'd be penciled in tonight? So do you think do you put him in tonight as an eleven seven and he's like the seventh D? And I mean, give him five minutes or seven minutes. It'd be an easy way to ease him back in. I think so, right? Just and a thought. I, I mean, Keith's gonna have to juggle the lines anyway. I, listen, I know a lot of people don't love the job he's done. That's a, tonight's a difficult one. It's a scr- but you know what? Okay. Gio's still on uh, LTIR. Oh, I thought he was activated. Okay. So. Can I ask you guys something? Hmm. No. Of the uh, forward Jesse, group. What do you want to... Of the forward group that's playing, who is your person? Each of you has to pick a different one that needs to step up. That need You need to see something from. This is the night where it's like, okay, now you got an opportunity. Seize it. Max Domi. Max Domi, he's been playing well. He has been playing well, um, but so much of splitting up Willie, Mitch, and Austin has to do with the quality of Max's play. And we know he can set up plays. We know he can put up points. You got to be better in your own end, which he's not. And you got to um, never, ever, ever do a stupid pass like you did that essentially cost them the game. Yeah, no more Gouch passes. Uh, yeah, no more of that. It was literally a Gouch pass. Mm-hmm. You can't do that ever again. There was 320 to go in a one-goal game in your barn. You could have tied it. Easily could have tied it. And uh, you blew it. Jesse, who's your guy to step up? You know what tonight is? Tonight, 
Leafs undermanned. Nobody's out there. They're going to schedule a loss, blah, blah, blah. Washington Capitals fighting for a playoff spot. They're going to be trying really hard. Tonight is a Ryan Reeves go out there, smash some people in the face, get into a fight. No Tom Wilson. Maybe get a suspension. Do some crazy shit on the ice kind of game. That's what I want to see tonight. I want to see Ryan Reeves justify this whole thing that's happened all year. I want to see him go out there, make room on the ice, as, as Steve Dangle likes to say, and just cause chaos because the team doesn't have the offensive weapons. So let's do the other thing where we just bully people. How well, about that from this team? It's interesting because he wouldn't be a deterrent in this game at all. They don't have Wilson. And I'm trying to think of who else would even sort of be in that conversation. Reeves, the ice is yours when you're on it. Just run Nobody, amok. Nobody's pushing back. Go out there and just do some stuff. He hasn't really had a game like that where he's like, you know what? I think Matthews isn't there. Marner's not there. You got no star. Well, Willie's there. JT's there. But like, you got nobody who's going to step up and be like, this is my game. Why not Ryan Reeves just say, this is my time and I'm going to make some highlight reel? I need him, I need him to wake up like that old Bam Margera video where he goes, hi, I'm Bam Margera and I feel like kicking my dad's ass all day today. <laughs> <laughs> Except instead of my dad, it's the Washington Capitals. I don't know. That'd be nice. I think it'd be kind of cool if we saw Ryan Reeves just make it a, the Ryan Reeves show tonight. Because what the hell? This is not like, who cares if they lose? Just go out there and have some... Well, Make now, it the Ryan Reeves game. They are only a few points up on Tampa, gentlemen, as you pointed out yesterday. I think Steve's point last episode about like if you fall to the wild card, it's hard hard path to Stanley Cup no matter who you're playing. You play the Rangers, you play the Bruins, you play the Panthers. Who cares? I j I'm it's, just not it's sure hard. it matters. It's it's hard to get to the Stanley Cup final. It's, it's hard to win a round. Who who cares who you play? It's funny. There, this year there are teams in the East, like playoff teams, where I'm like, you know what? The Leafs actually match up well against them. And the Leafs are not going to play any of them. <laughs> they're, 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 like they don't match up well against the Panthers. They don't match up well against the Bruins. They've consistently gotten beaten up by the Hurricanes. Um, I, the Rangers are the only one where I'm like, yeah, they might beat them. And you're not getting home ice either way because of how you played so far in this season. You're not high enough up in the standings to get home ice. So Why? Was losing to Chicago twice and Buffalo several times, was that damaging to their season? The, the losing to Arvid Soderblom, oh who, my God. who still might only have two wins on the season. He's I got, got four. He's got he's four. Got four he's got four now. Like four, oh. I think he's four, 15, and one or something like that. Only, only half of his wins Please now are from up, the Leafs. Let's check. Arvid Soderblom. Has four wins on the year. He's 420 and one with an 876. And two of his wins came against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mother, f his <laughs> career record is 632 and three. Yep. This season, he beat the Tor Toronto Maple Leafs twice. And uh, they're not going to get home ice. So he's played 45 games in the NHL yeah. and one third of his career wins <laughs> are against Toronto. Unless Mrazek got one. Kind of crazy that every other league he's played in, he's had really good save percentage and really good goals against average, except for the yeah. NHL. Well, he's, and he's also played for the, the Hawks, but I mean, they stink. Yeah. But they it's stink. so, yeah, they played themselves out of home ice a long time ago. Yeah. So they, they not going to get it. That's that's their 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 bed. They got to lay in it, and whoever they face right now, it doesn't really matter because it's going to be a hard road. So just get healthy for the playoffs. That's all I want here is all these guys who are out with illnesses and all these achy pains. Get healthy, have a healthy team for the roster, the playoffs. Whether you go eleven and seven or your regular lineup, just make sure on day one you're ready to go. That's what it's got to be about at this point. Last time they needed a next man up performance, uh, Bobby McMahon earned himself several million dollars. Mm -hmm. That dude was a healthy scratch. He was going to be a healthy scratch. And he had literally two dozen good games. And the Leafs are like, here's over two and a half million dollars. So you're <laughs> telling me Noah Gregor hat trick. Oh, yeah. I mean, fine. it would be killer if he did something, anything that wasn't scoring in the first game of the season. When was the last time that guy bought in a goal? Noah yeah. Gregor hat trick. It's coming. It'd be nice. I'm still going to say Robbie. I mean, he's the one making the most noise. I mean, okay, you know what? <laughs> We're galaxy brain in this Just shit. Just name every guy. John Tavares. Oh, okay. You got you make well, $11 yeah. million. Dollars. You've scored over 20 goals. Your coach said you stunk last game. 
Matthews isn't out. You're the number one center. Go out there and be vintage John Tavares. Okay. Yeah, treat this like it's the Islanders. Like, why are we... Oh, <laughs> no, I then think they're going to lose. <laughs> you know what? I think the Leaf 14 forward needs to step up. John Tavares! <laughs> okay. It's him. It's got to be him. When was the last time Noah Gregor scored a goal? Trivia. <sighs> December 4th. I'm going to say January 22nd. December 9th. Damn! <laughs> that was a good guess, Steve. Wow. A game. If you had said to me, so D- December 9th, if I told you, like, and they've played, what, 25 games at that point? Hey, Noah Gregor's got five goals. You'd be like, well, that's pretty good. Oh, cool. no. December 16th. Oh, you oh, stink! Wow. I, missed, I missed one goal. December 16th. What did My you bad. say? What was your date? I the said fourth. the 4th. Okay. But even so. I should have said the 14th. That's pretty close. <laughs> pretty close. It's but yeah, it's a, close. that's uh, a long time ago. No, and but like he it's, was performing. It's March twenty like, eighth. Well, oh my god! <laughs> do you know that? Do you know that Noah Gregor once did play with Matthews and Marner on the top line? Yeah, they tried yeah, to get there because he earned it, and everyone's like, "Good for him." And then we saw him there, and we were like, "Oh, go oh, okay." <laughs> I'd like to see the return of Noah Gregor too. I'm with you. Steve's probably right. Uh, Willie, Morris. Willie, JP. Willie, yeah. the money makers. Yeah. No, hey, everybody's out. Go play hockey. We're talking about all the guys who need to score. How about Jake McCabe? Uh, screw your head on a little tighter challenge. <laughs> yeah. How about no more passing behind the back between the legs challenge? Do you think he knows how to not pinch in situations where he should no. be behind his own net? No, I don't think he does. I don't know. I love Jake McCabe, McCabe so net, much, sorry. and it's sometimes it's painful. Yeah, yeah. He, he loves pinching. He's uh, just vintage Bobby Orr out there. TJ Brody's fighting for his NHL life right now. Mm-hmm. There, there is no shortage of guys in the lineup who ought to have a very, very good game tonight. Mm-hmm. Hey, they're gonna, they're gonna win. Joseph Wool. Oh yeah, you have a, a bounce back performance. How many times do we see him have a have bad back to back games? Like, are we realizing that this isn't necessarily an automatic loss if they just no nothing, try? Nothing's an like, automatic loss. No, I know that. Yeah. I know that. Like, the, there's got to be some determination there. Do you want to listen? There's 11 games left. Do you want to be in the playoff lineup or not? You want your name on the Stanley Cup or not? What I don't think they, everyone on the roster meets all the qualifications. What if they just started like calling up Marlies and resting the guys and treated it like more NBA style, where guys just sat out? You said eleven games. That's so little games. It's so few. Uh, <laughs> that was this. Oh, that eleven games. That's so few games. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I feel like at this point, if they just rest guys for four games, I know Austin's trying to chase 70, but now that he has an illness and all that, that might be out of the question. Um, I don't know. Just rest him. Be nice to call up uh, whoever, whoever's healthy, man. Like, Alex, yeah. Alex Steves, Nick Abrazizi. Yeah. I don't care. Abrazizi was in this lineup for like a lot of last year. Adam and I saw him score a goal. Yeah. Did you? He scored an yeah. NHL goal in the final game of the season. Uh, I think it was 2022. Uh, Leafs and Bruins. Two. Neither of them started anyone. Uh-oh. Yeah, no. that re- yeah, it was a fun game. It was a fun game. At least one. It, yeah, and yeah. Just, Steve didn't. Steve had seats somewhere else, but it just came and sat with us because nobody was there. Oh, fun. <laughs> yeah, I remember, like someone left. Yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah. sat next to you. Yeah. That's funny. It was fun. Also, you guys were at the game separately. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. I don't know why, though. I know that I, it was my birthday present. For my I was you there know for what? Rogers thing. Oh, uh, Steve yeah. was that. I remember this. Yeah. I remember this. I was gonna say you were there for Sportsnet. <laughs> I was there for Sportsnet. Yeah, that's why you were there solo because you did a thing, and then yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember the story. And there was oh, mm, mm. <laughs> oh, we're not doing it. We're not doing it. <laughs> okay, not doing don't it. do it. Don't do it. Um, someone was not kind. That evening. someone was not kind. Carlton. Wow. No, I can't. I will Carlton fight to the that. Death that was the day Carlton punched a child. Wow. <laughs> Can you believe that? Jesse! That's crazy that he did that. He did it. Damn. He, did he it. came to my son's birthday party, and it was only a couple kids who deserved it. No, <laughs> And he pushed Leo in the pool. Yeah, get in there. And he just shoved him in there. Nope. This episode is brought to you in part by BetterHelp. Mm. You know, listen, it is, it is that time. Steve, let me ask you. How's your sleep been? <laughs> it's not good. What <laughs> happens when your sleep's not good? I feel sad. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. right? <laughs> I can laugh about it. I have tears in my eyes from yawning. But yes. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes sometimes the things that become overwhelming uh, are, they feel like a mountain, but maybe they're a molehill or maybe they are a mountain. 
and you just kind of have to figure out a way through it. And it's good to have an extra set of eyes, uh, an extra set of ears in this particular case to kind of go, okay. Extra set of fingers. Yeah, that toes, too. Toes, belly button. The full body. The full, the, all the faculties. You type with your nose. That's right. And you can you can do any of that uh, with BetterHelp. Basically, it's nice to have somebody else, like a therapist, to bounce things off of. The great thing with BetterHelp is you're going to be matched with somebody very quickly. Right. It's 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 much, much faster than it than it takes normally to get a uh, therapist. And of course, you can do this over text. You can do this over FaceTime. Uh, you can do it over the phone, whatever works for you. And if you want to learn more, go to BetterHelp.com slash SDP to get 10 percent off your first month. That, again, is BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash SDP. Hey, guys, have you considered NordVPN, but for family guys? Yeah, what does that mean? Like us. Yeah. You know? You know, protect your whole family with one NordVPN account, including Whoa. your shared Meg gadgets. Egg and Stewie. No, not that family and guy. Peter. The real life one. Oh, and Brian. That's right. Install, dog. Install NordVPN on your router to secure every device on your network with encryption. You can use the kill switch feature to stop data leaking oh. when you lose your VPN connection, which is crazy. Uh, and then there's link up devices. Uh, you can link up devices for secure file sharing and LAN gaming. So if you're if you're gaming like Steve is, let's say you're doing a stream and you're doing Red Dead Redemption. Like I do all the time. Yeah, you okay. can link up all your devices for it. Uh, browse with peace of mind with NordVPN. It does not track your online um, uh, activities, which is great too. So listen. Nord Give me the offer. You want the offer? Give me the offer. What is it just for me? Let me what to the offer? Come on. Okay. Well, fine. Uh, how about this? We we give you. You go to NordVPN.com uh -huh. slash dangle. Uh huh. Man, there's a lot of pressure. Okay, and it's risk free, <laughs> and you get a 30 day money back guarantee. And the link is in the description. Read it. It's yeah, exclusive. A lot of pressure here. Exclusive deal. Save big and get four months extra and a 30 day money back guarantee. Just go to NordVPN.com slash dangle hold on so when you sign up you get four months extra for free for yep. free that's the deal that's the deal that's the, the deal. moon will go around the earth four times wait extra. that's not how is that it how works, the is it? month works i don't think that no how that's works. not how it works no, no no but you'll get you, you'll you understand you you get what a third of the year looks like it's free and it's with nordvpm.com slash dangle maybe it's wrong of me but when for i sure. when i when you tell me the Sens and the Sabres played, and you say it was a disaster. My assumption was it was a disaster for the Senators. <laughs> well, see, that's where I think you're wrong. I, well, I, I was, because I, I was talking to you last night, and you were like, holy shit, it's 5 nothing mm -hmm. for right. the Sens. But there are a few teams right now. Like We're all missing the anti-playoffs. Mm -hmm. And the Sens and Devils are racing towards last place. In the anti-playoffs. Yeah. Two teams dead. Dead. They are dead. They are not making the playoffs. Columbus, Ottawa? Dead. No, no. Oh. No, 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 no. Columbus understood the assignment. No, Columbus knows what they're doing. Yeah. Columbus is like, let's go get us some Max Celebrini. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think his name's Ivan Demidov. There's that huge Russian defenseman. I forget his name. Let's go out and put ourselves in the conversation for that. And the devils and sends are like, you know what? I don't know. Let's go for it. Mm -hmm. Let's fucking finish. Let's inspire our fans and finish like, I don't know, six points out of the playoffs. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Let's go. Like the worst possible place to be is in the middle. No, below the middle. There's a line. You want to be above the line? There's two lines. Okay. You want to be above the middle line or the line at the bottom. You want to be as close to that as possible. Mm. And both of those teams are hell bent on making it as hard as possible for their franchise to get better. Could that be because they will have to forfeit their draft, their first round pick at some point in the next three years, and they don't want it to be like a super high pick? Because remember, Which, Ottawa. Ottawa's got to forfeit a pick because of the um, Dadanoff trade that they screwed up with. Uh, and a I'm, first rounder? It's a first rounder. They were fined a first rounder. So the way it works is Ottawa. Oh, man. I forgot about that. Ottawa will forfeit their 2024, 2025, or 2026 first round pick. Um, it's. I think it's their choice. That's mm -hmm. so much. They have to let everybody know within 24 hours of the conclusion of the draft lottery. So we're going to know in the next three, four weeks here.
When's the draft lottery? Um, it's usually mid-April, isn't it? Right, right after the playoffs start. First or oh. second round? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, every year after the draft lottery, they like I wouldn't like forfeit this year's. I, I wouldn't either. Just well, kind of keep delayed until you're kind of good. Well, <laughs> you know, if you're not, if when's you're not, that going to be? If you're not good next year, you know, you kind of push it and be like, maybe we'll be better next year. You know. Yeah. Oh man. That's what I would do oh, if man. I was I didn't Ottawa. Even know about that. Now Pierre Dorian royally fucked them. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, and it's very evident by the, by the way the season and his tenure is gone and the way they've losing this draft pick. It's not great. A no. First round pick. Like, okay. They do have Boston's first round pick, by the way, but mm-hmm. uh, who cares? I know it's, we talked about the this second at, round pick. Yeah. I, I know we talked about this at the time. Um, but now that we've had some time mm-hmm. to think about it, <laughs> first round pick stiff, eh? <laughs> no, it's not. No? no. No. Because what it tells me is there's more to this story. What t- what it tells me is that this wasn't a mistake. Mm, there are plenty. or it was a mistake, and then it was they tried to cover it up. That it was an avoidable me. mistake. You know? I, I think, but I think it's more than that, Jesse. I think there was. It, to me, it feels like intent, mm-hmm. and 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 not intent as in we we traded them and we didn't want to tell those those guys. I think they traded them without re- remembering, and then they lied about it. That's what I think happened. And I, and I, by they, I say one guy and it's Dorian. Counterpoint. Yes. At several times um, over the history of this podcast, we've had a story where a general manager had a um, contract voided because they didn't know the rules. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe these guys just uh, forget stuff. Maybe no, they're I think, human. I think there was a clear evidence of negligence on the part of the Ottawa Senators and Pierre Dorian, how that went all went down. Yes, that but negligence period. is not intent. Negligence. No, is, there was some intent I'm, later on. Like I said, mm-hmm. negligence first, intent later. Yeah. Mm. I'm. Well, I don't positive. know. I don't know what. You, what do you mean? What, at what point? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that. What that is trying to. The, okay. What you're trying to say? Here, here's what it is. Uh, a <laughs> lot of people. Um, uh, listen, Sens fans bring this up, and I understand. I understand where the anger comes from. Um, uh, the Blackhawks didn't have to pay a single draft pick. Yes, they should have had to pay a price too. I'm, I'm I agree. Price. It's not. It's, it, the thing we're talking about isn't if the Blackhawks didn't pay stiff enough a penalty. It's if it's just what the Ottawa Senators did justifies their penalty. And I'm Ottawa Senators fans, fans not to... in comparison to the Blackhawks. The Blackhawks should have paid a lot more of a penalty. But this is every player safety conversation we've ever had. Yes, where you you look at it's uh, it's with Morgan Riley getting suspended. Uh, for what he did to, uh, oh my God, who even was it? Ridley Gregg. Ridley Gregg, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, we're like, okay, yeah, five games for that makes sense if that's what's going to happen going forward, and that's never the case going forward. Mm-hmm. Okay, a first-round pick for that indiscretion from Pierre Dorian makes sense if every team is going to be held to that standard, but what Sens fans are angry about is no team is ever held to that standard. Right. Yeah. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Yeah. And, and I agree. And Michael Ann Lauer in his press conference said as much. He was like, I can't believe I'm having to deal with this. I was told this was not going to be a problem. Yeah, when he was buying the team, the the owners and Gary Bettman lied to him. Yes. And they told him that this was not an issue. It's going away. And then all of a sudden, a couple months later, they find him a first round pick. Shane Pinto had, what was it, four points last night? Mm-hmm. Man, they should have told that guy to stay at home. <laughs> Yeah, it's that bad dude for them. came back and he's been great. But what's interesting about losing to the Sabers in the way, or sorry, winning against the Sabers is the Sabers fans literally walked out. And there are calls this morning for Don Granato to lose his job. Um, I mean, when are we gonna stop? How many coaches you got to fire? Yeah, I think the Leafs got into that trap for a while, where it's like, is is it is it the coach or is it just it, like is it Phil Kessel or is it that no one else is an NHL player around Phil Kessel? Like, is it Jay McClements getting 18 minutes a night? Well, you know and, what I'm saying? You remember we, those years. And didn't we get our answer so loud? Super quick. Super quick. Phil Kessel had the two best years of his career, best three years of his career immediately after, and had back-to-back cups, including leading his team in scoring in one of those cup runs. Yeah. Whoops. Like, uh, I'm trying to... No, not list of NHL head coaches. That's not what I freaking said. Oh, it is actually what I said. Uh, I'm going to type in list of Sabres coaches. It is unfathomable 
how many coaches this team has had in recent dude dude okay lindy ruff was their coach forever mm -hmm. 1998 to 2013 he's available everybody <laughs> um then ron rolston 2013 2014 uh Ted Nolan, it says from uh, 96 to 2015. We know that's not true. I think he was hired back. Dan Bilesma, 2017. Phil Housley, 2019. I, do, I don't remember that. Mm -hmm. uh, Ralph Kruger, 2021. And Don Granado uh, was hired in 2021. And it's 2024. This is the longest tenured head coach Ralph the Kruger, by the way, had since Lindy Ruff. Ralph Kruger, by the way, who was not even coaching hockey when they hired him. No! He was coaching soccer in Europe. Oh, yeah. He's, he coached in the NHL twice. It didn't go well either time. Yeah. Hey, you know who we should take from? The Oilers in the mid-2010s. <laughs> Terrible. Or early 2010s. This is the thing. Like, I don't know if it is Don Granato, but I could tell you that major injuries to guys like Tage Thompson and, mm -hmm. you know, Devin Levi not performing well and, and, and. If and. it was just maybe the UPL plays better, you know, if they give him the net instead of Levi at the beginning, I don't know. If yeah, plays well, better, but it's, there's oh, so listen, much. Even if it is his fault, at some point you're going to have to stop firing coaches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's too much. It's too much. Has any team had more coaching turnover than them? How much blame do you put on Kevin Adams? Hmm. You know what I think it is? Is uh, they started really well and they fell out of the race. And fans are really disappointed. And because this was going to be the year they were in, we all predicted they were making the playoffs. I did. I thought they were going to be second. And they added Bowen Byram at the deadline. Tell which, me, which really has been great. Move. Yeah. Really yeah. Good move. He got fined, I think, this morning, but whatever. He did. He, yeah. He probably should have been suspended. It was a bad hit. Yeah. But um, they started really well. And, you know, you know, oh, Toronto's a tough market to play in. The fans are so hard on them. Yeah. They haven't won a cup since two years prior to the moon landing. There's some anxiety here. There's a little bit of bitterness here. The Sabres have never won the cup, and they haven't made the playoffs since when? I think it was 2014, did you say? Uh, 20... Over a decade 11. ago. 2011. So the Buffalo Sabres currently own the longest playoff appearance drought in the four major pro sports. They are tied, no way. They are tied with the New York Jets. They have wow. each not made the playoffs the last 12 seasons, which is the record right now, running current record for uh, North American pro sports. Holy didn't, moly. Didn't yeah. Sacramento have the record and then... They made it last year. Oh, yeah, they wow. went to the playoffs last year. The uh, Lions, long time, didn't make the playoffs. They made it this year. Right. And the, so the Jets are at 12 seasons and the Buffalo Sabres are at 12 seasons. The, their fans are pissed off. And the right to be pissed off, that doesn't mean anyone needs to get fired. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Maybe they can just make some adept moves mm -hmm. this offseason and, and maybe take advantage of other teams' cap troubles. Like, and Okay, more... let's let's go higher. How okay. much blame is placed on the Pagula family? Oh, I mean... Well, they've been there the whole time, so... 12 seasons, no playoffs, no fan base besides the New York Jets right now is suffering as much as the Buffalo Sabres. How much of that blame goes to ownership? I mean... It, it, I hate this the same. The buck stops with, you know, like <laughs> shut, shut up. up. <laughs> oh, Can you say it the way you said it again? The, the buck stops with me. <laughs> Something Dubas used to say. Well, the buck stops with me. What is the buck? Where is this buck? Is it a is it an animal or is it a dollar? Milwaukee. Even the buck has won more recently yes. than the Buffalo Sabers. That's right. That's right. The Milwaukee buck. The Milwaukee bucks. Right. The buck. Stops at the chamber. All right, Adam, say your phrase. I, the buck stops with me. Um, <laughs> no, I think I think you've got I think you've got a town that is a you know loves its hockey, loves its football. Happy to see the football team winning, and in it. Um, and you know, Kevin Adams did. L listen, we were singing Evan, Kevin Adams' praises going into this season. I don't. I think the Pagulas can be blamed for making bad managerial choices leading up to Kevin Adams. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's one of those things where you know. Toronto Maple Leafs fans are very, very lucky, and you may not think this, but hmm? when when we were at the 15 or whatever playoff, 15 year playoff drought, except for that one blip shortened year that we made the playoffs, the rebuild was supposed to and probably should have gone much longer. The Leafs snuck in in the last three games 
and Matthew scored 40 goals. Who would have expected that from a rookie? And, and every Lightning player got hurt. And every Lightning player got hurt. And thank thank God for that. It was a great playoff run. We got we you know we even went up two one on the Washington Capitals in the first round and then lost. Mm. My my point is that when you get to the point of you have all these young talented players and they're very very good, a lot of people believe that that curve is just straight up. And I think that Buffalo, as Steve mentioned, needs stability. Add to this group. You saw what this group did last year. Okay, mm-hmm. you're seeing what they're doing this year. It's unacceptable. I get it. Just just add to them. You added Bowen Byram. It's I, it's clear that's what they're going to do. And I think I think this this summer is going to be a good one because I know they have some cap, cap flex, flexibility, but they also have some brilliant talent. Their defense is crazy. Owen Power, yeah. Rasmus Dahlin, Bowen that for Byram. A full season. Yes. Put Bowen. You saw Bowen Byram's first power play with the Buffalo Sabres. You saw that. Clip. Oh, it was hilarious. He went end to end, and he's like, "Why is nobody with me?" Uh, well, it'd be nice to like, I don't know, maybe you look at the assistance, but like, I'm just looking last year, the Sabres were 42, 33 and seven. Yep. That was the first time the Sabres won over 40 games. The first time the Sabres won more than half their games since the last time they made the playoffs, which was the 2010, 2011 season where Lindy Ruff was their coach. Yeah. The last time the Sabres made the playoffs and someone not named Lindy Ruff was a coach was the 96, 97 season. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at this. You got their fans re- are right to be upset, but I just mm-hmm. don't know if D- Don Fire. Don Granado got you 42 wins last year. Yeah, I don't think it's firing the coach. I think it's adding to this group. It's a great group. Uh, great group. Al- like, look at this: Olson, Tuck, Cousins, uh, Thompson, Jeff Skinner when he's on, and then Darlene Byram, uh, uh, Owen Power, uh, whose contract extension kicks in next year, and it's pricey, but it's deserved. I, you know, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like they're going to be okay. Who led the Sabres in scoring the last time the Sabres uh, made the playoffs? Tyler Ennis. No. That's uh, not a bad guess. He was fourth. Okay, okay. He had 20 goals, 49 points. Mm, nope. He was not in the playoffs with them. I am going to say Maxim Uh No. Was he even on the roster? He's not Doesn't on the roster. look like he was on yeah. the roster. I don't know. Thomas Vanek. Oh, Wow. 32 goals, 73 points. Drew Stafford was number two with 31. 30. Drew Stafford scored 31 goals um, and 52 points. Jason Pominville, um had uh, 22 and 52. And uh, Tim Connolly rounding up the top five. See here, I'm mad at the Pagulas for not giving Rick Jenner at another playoff game before retirement. Well, that sucks. Yeah, he went a long time calling a lot of bad teams. He the- had so many, so many iconic calls. Yep, I still love him uh, justifying the Brad May call because people said he had that planned. He's like, "You think I planned a Brad May playoff call?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, man, boy, boy, boy. It has been a very, very, very long time. Uh, not many of these guys. How many of these players are still in the NHL? I count Tyler Myers. I think that's it. Yep, that is it. That is it. He's the only guy. He's the only guy from the Sabres roster that made the playoffs who's still in the NHL. Um, moving on from the Sabres for a second, uh, we have some some news, and this is really interesting news. Breaking. Uh, breaking, but adds to what we already said. Now, I told you that the Philadelphia Flyers brought some goaltending help over from Russia yesterday. Uh, they're doing it again today because Ivan Fedotov's contract has been terminated by CSKA hey. Moscow. Oh. He's 27. He has a 914 save percentage and 230, 237 goals against average of 44 games. According to Elliot Friedman, he said everyone's being very careful here for obvious reasons, but it's believed Fedotov is en route to begin his NHL career with the Flyers. Wasn't aware until this morning, but all sides sort of worked out a solution over the last few weeks. That is fantastic That's news. That's so good. So, uh, you know what's funny? So, that uh, clip went up yesterday where we were talking about the Flyers goaltending situation. Yeah. And sometimes I forget how quick the news cycle moves. So, I talked about Cutter Hart and the investigation. People knew about that. Mm-hmm. That's recent news. And I talked about uh, a Russian goalie for the Flyers basically getting ab- abducted by the Russian government. And people were like, what are you talking about? Oh, um, and this is, uh, wasn't this a story like last year? Yeah. Yeah. Or the year before. Yeah. So Ivan Fedotov, I, I reached out to some KHL players and they were like, no, this guy's the real deal. Like mm-hmm. he's a, he's a crazy goalie. He's one of the best goalies in the league. He was going to go over to the Philadelphia Flyers. Um, and they basically arrested him 
at his gym, mm -hmm. uh, I think in St. Petersburg, Russia, and they shipped him off to the Arctic uh, to be in the Navy, I'm pretty sure, the, the, uh, because the, of conscription. Yeah, the North Sea Fleet. Yeah, and um, it's because he wanted to go to Philly. It's because he wanted to leave the uh, KHL and go to the NHL. And uh, I guess for whatever reason, now that he's served his time, which included the KHL, by the way, it's bullshit. Um, they're hopefully, fingers crossed, allowing him to... Uh, I believe he's on a plane ride Come over. to North America. I fucking hope so. Yeah. Listen, I, I, I don't know. Are you complaining about fairness in Russia? No, no. Like I'm just <laughs> like I'm hoping. I'm hoping the guy gets to realize his NHL dream. No yeah. one deserves what happened to him. No, I wonder with those two goalies. You know, obviously, uh, the Flyers have had serious goaltending issues and are at risk of losing the, their spot in the playoffs. If they go to the playoffs with two unproven goalies like this, that could be quite the story. Like that could be fun. You have no idea what you're going to get. No, and like, does anyone have a? Does anyone have an adequate scouting report on either of those guys right now? I would hope the Flyers do. I mean, the Sharks, we, we actually didn't talk about this on the podcast. The Sharks just fired the Russian scout, uh, Igor Ironko, um, because apparently he like wasn't going to games or something. <laughs> he wasn't adequately fulfilling his duties. Like it's Not every team has a robust staff over there right now. Mm -hmm. um, so Difficult to do business. Yeah. How yeah. do you, I don't know, you I just try to beat them. Like that, I think that's part of the reason you see a lot of goalies have a hot start to their career is you don't necessarily know how to beat them yet. Um, you don't have the scouting report. And then you see teams sort of start to figure them out uh, a little. But you can ride that to a round or two. You can, th what the Flyers are trying to do right now is have their cake and eat it too. They sold mm -hmm. and now they're also trying to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. If they're able to do that, how do you not call that a huge victory for Danny Breer. I think it's huge. I think it'd be, man, that'd be a great story. I'm cheering for the guy. Um, producer Drew put in a request, gentlemen. No. He wants us to do some predictions for the show today. Ooh. Okay? Okay. And this is, this is as of Thursday, March 28th. All right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with division winners at the end of the season. Who will... With 10, sometimes, sorry, sometimes 10, sometimes 9, sometimes 8 games to go. Who will win each division? So we got, in the Atlantic division, we'll start there. It's the division that I think we all watch the most. Mm -hmm. Boston and Florida are separated by two points. However, the Panthers have two games in hand on the Bruins. So the Panthers, or the Bruins are ahead, but the Panthers have two games in hand on them. And they're sub-500 in their last 10, though, the Panthers. They are. Uh, Boston has lost 15 games in overtime. Florida has lost five. So Florida's got more wins overall. Who do you give the Atlantic Division title to? Ah, I still like Florida there. Yeah. I, I think they'll they'll tighten up over their last ten games. Um I mean, they know how important uh going into the playoffs playing well is. Um they'll tighten up. I think they'll win it. Jesse. And I mean, if you're the Bruins, you probably want the lease. I'm gonna go with the Boston Bruins. I think uh I think they're going to get the better goaltending down the stretch here, and I like the little two-point advantage that they have, even though the Florida Panthers have uh, two games in hand. I don't like how they struggled recently. And I think the Boston Bruins, they know how to win from last year, and they captured the President's Trophy. I think they just continue to roll along. They win back-to-back -back Atlantic Division Championships, something that nobody thought in their in their mind going into the beginning of last season would happen, no and shot. I think they, they do it again. Uh, in the Metropolitan, we have two teams vying for the same spot. The Carolina Hurricanes have played 73 games. They have 97 points. The New York Rangers, who are the first team to clinch a playoff spot this year, have set, played 72 games, one less than Carolina, have 100 points. Who do you give it to? The Mighty Blue Shirts. Um, they, they have games in hand, three-point gap that's really difficult to make up. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be the Rangers. Jesse? Yeah, there's not enough games left, I think, to unless the Rangers really falter. I'm and they've decide. been 8-2-0 in their last 10. Yeah, I'm going to side with the Rangers here. Uh, Carolina, for just for notes, have been 7-3-0, and and that's how good the Rangers have been. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, they've lost ground on the Rangers despite winning 7 of 10. This division a couple of days ago was a lot more exciting, but the Winnipeg Jets have gone on a bit of a losing streak lately. However... Dallas has played 73 games. They have 99 points. This is the Central Division. The Avalanche have played 72 games, one less than the Stars, 97 points. And the Jets have also played 72 games, 
94 points. Who are you giving the Central Division to? The the Avs have gone nine and one in their last ten, and they have made up two points. That's because the, that's because Dallas is eight and two. <laughs> two point, and Dallas has won five straight. Um, I'm gonna give it to Colorado. They're playing so stupid good. Um, they had one hiccup the other night against Montreal. It's, it, I I think Colorado is hot enough to pass Dallas. Jesse, for a team that it feels like all year. I've been waiting for them to get it going. They only have 19 losses on the entire season. I feel like the Dallas Stars are hitting their stride right now, and I think they hold on to this this lead here. It's just, the Avalanche have really struggled on the road, and not every game is played at home in ball center where Nathan McKinnon could put up a million points. So I'm going to say the Dallas Stars hold on to the lead here in the division. All right. Now, let me ask you this question a different way. When you look at the Pacific, the pa- the, the pa- Panthers, my gosh, the right? Vancouver Canucks oh, okay. and the Edmonton Oilers. Okay. The Oilers have 12 games left. The uh, Canucks have 10 games left, but there is a eight point difference between the two of them. Yeah, that one's not really a prediction. It's Vancouver. Could Vancouver lose the Pacific Division? No, and they're. they're <laughs> that's my question. No, they're blip. They go like winless? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it would have to be, right? Their blip is over. Like they, they went through a stretch where they weren't playing very well. They're, they're doing, they're playing great. They're beating everyone. They're fine. Okay. Now I'm going to go in the Eastern Conference again. Who will be the second wild card team in the Eastern Conference? Currently, it's the Washington Capitals who are two points up on the Red Wings, and the Capitals are five points up on the New Jersey Devils. Uh, and by the way, they're one point behind the Flyers, so it could be the Flyers. You know what? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it's the Flyers. You think the Capitals are gonna displace the Flyers? Yep, and I think the Flyers drop down but manage to hold off the Red Wings. Jesse Blake. Yeah, I think you nailed it. That's where I was going as well. I think the the Capitals are going to, I think, take that third spot in the Metro. And everybody's going to be shocked that they're going to do it with like a minus 20 goal differential and with zero expectations on this team. Um, the Red Wings, though, I think hop over the Flyers. I'm going to say that uh, the Flyers. Yeah. yeah. Sad, yeah. sad collapse at the end, even oh, though they're no. in a playoff season. A playoff seed for uh, the majority of the year. I think the Red Wings take the second wild card spot there. Jesse, that would be heartbreaking. The Flyers inserting two random goalies into this is so fun. Yeah, that's it's what I'm so saying. saying. Yeah. Um, now, the they haven't been great of late, but they do have a six-point gap on the St. Louis Blues. The Vegas Golden Knights and St. Louis Blues both have 10 games remaining, but the Golden Knights have six more points. So rephrasing the question, is there any possible way that either of you can see the St. Louis Blues coming in and snatching no. the second. I'll uh, say no, and then, Steve, you can say anything more. <laughs> uh, Adam, what year is it? It is 2024. Oh, so it's not 2019. That's right. Oh, okay. Nope. Uh, it's over. <laughs> okay, yeah, we, it's got over. Our, we got our eight playoff teams in the in the West. I mean, that, uh, that overtime loss to St. Louis the other night was a dagger. Okay. That was really bad. Okay, now... Uh, my question to you guys is, where do the Leafs finish? Do they finish in a wild card spot or do they finish third in the division? Uh, you know, it's funny. I was actually just looking at that and I expected Tampa to be... Uh, oh, <laughs> you know what I just realized? <laughs> They're 8-1-1 one, one in their last 10? Not only are they 8-1-1 one, one in their last 10, but I was like, oh, the Leafs still have an eight-point gap on them. And then I realized I was looking at the Capitals. Ah, yes. Uh, the Lightning are two points back of the Leafs. And everyone is sick. What if what if they just have the Atlantic Division flu <laughs> and they're hoping to drop down and play the Rangers? Yeah, what if this is all 3D chess? Yeah, they're just smart, man. They got it all fixed. Do you think they out. match up well against the Rangers? Uh I mean The, the Rangers I, are just not the boogeyman. The Rangers are an extremely good team. Um, I just like I've watched the Leafs beat the Rangers. I've watched the Bruins kill the Leafs. I've watched the Panthers kill the Leafs. I've watched the Hurricanes kill the Leafs. Okay, let's go with the team that we've actually seen the Leafs beat. Um, it's still, none of them are easy matchups. Um, ooh, Tampa's hitting their stride. They made some good additions. Everyone's sick or hurt Do on the Leafs. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say the Leafs end up in a wild card spot. Jesse. I don't think the Leafs are... I don't know if it's not it's not necessarily trying everybody's trying to win games every night every night, but the Leafs just need to get healthy 
And that should be the focus, I think, number one to get heading into the playoffs. I don't think they care really where they place in this seating in terms of the Eastern Conference. And I think Tampa needs to be playing well to be going into the playoffs. I think they're more in that mentality. And I think it's illustrated by their eight two eight and two record to close the season here. So I'm gonna go Tampa takes third in the Atlantic and Leafs fall down to the first wild card spot. And eight one and one. Gentlemen. <laughs> eight one and one. There you go. Where where did if that's the case, based on that, where do the Leafs finish in the playoffs? From oh, what no. you've seen. Oh, so. First round exit. Against the against the uh against Broadway. Against New York. Who's the favorite? No, oh, New York. Uh, they have to be. Yeah. So here's what we've had for a number of years now we've had the Leafs go into playoff series and what I've said is take the fact that they're the Leafs out of it looking at all of their regular season performance uh looking at them on paper they should win this series and every year except for last year they lost (laughs) yeah yeah even the Montreal one which is so mind-blowing um but like even Tampa last year, you're like, okay, someone's got to knock them off eventually. You th- the you Leafs thought- added all these players. The year before, you thought in 20, uh, what was it, 2022? Or nah, sorry, 22? 2022, not like, really. The, no. But last year with <laughs> ROR, with Ryan O'Reilly, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Please, please let this be enough. And they still like... 22, I don't think. Yeah, 2022, That's not really. Well, there have been years where you're like, you know what? Outside of the fact that they're the Leafs, they should win. This is not one of those years. No. This is one of those years where I'm like, no, they're not the favorite. They won't be the favorite against the Rangers. They won't be the favorite against the Panthers. They won't be the favorite against the Bruins. Uh, even if they were to go into a series against the Hurricanes, if that were to happen, they won't be the favorite going into that. Well, they'll I be wanna... the favorite against the Flyers when they meet. Yeah, for sure. Like, <laughs> dude, I, I want them to... Well, I mean, the Flyer, last time the Flyers went to the Stanley Cup final, they were the seven seed. Yeah. Or, yeah, seven. And LA won being a seven seed. Uh, eight seed. Oh, there you go. Eight seed. So it's, but you're asking me who is favored, and it ain't the Leafs. I'm not going to put it in the words Jesse did because my mouth won't let me. Um, but um, it's going to be a very tough year. Okay. Where does Edmonton finish? Oh, man. Man. You are know, they, in the playoffs, are they in? Oh, like they're not. Like, you don't mean like in the division? No, I mean like so. They're they're probably going to play the L.A. Kings in the first round, right? I thought, as recently as like a week and a half ago, the Oilers were going to play the Kings in the first round and kill them. I really did think that. Now the Kings look good, and then I watched the Kings beat the Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks were the first team in that game to hit 20 shots on goal, and they did it with three and a half minutes to go. The Kings know who they're preparing to play. Um, I thought the Oilers would have killed the Kings recently. They've really locked it up and tightened it up, and they got Arvidsson back, and they're hot after a severe cold. I still think the Oilers win, but they're not playing as well as the Kings are right now. Yes. Kings are on a four-game win streak. So, Mm -hmm. okay. Jesse. It's a real tough one. History is telling me to just side with the Edmonton Oilers because that's how the last two years have gone. The Oilers have eliminated the Kings in the playoffs. Home ice is a big advantage. And not there haven't been substantial changes in in either roster in terms of like the star players are all there. And what the Edmonton Oilers have done is kind of added – I think in terms of like their depth scoring is definitely uh, more robust than it was last year. And the Kings have had emergences on their own right, you know, um, having Quinton Byfield take another step and adding PLD. And we'll see what, what kind of performance he starts to give in the playoffs. That'll let's be see. fascinating. Let's honestly. see if he starts caring more. So it's a it's a different teams, different teams around the edges. And the goaltending for the Kings is completely different, too. So I don't know. It's it's a real tough one. And if you take a step back and we look at their records from March 1st, um, they're pretty much identical. The Oilers are eight three and two. The Kings are eight three and one. So, like this little hot blip here isn't that too much of a difference. I'm going to just lean towards the Edmonton Oilers because they're the favorite. I think going into the series, but I'm I need more. I need more the next couple eleven days of games to really make a determination. Okay, Winnipeg Jets likely to play the Avalanche in the first round or the Dallas Stars. Oh man! Oh man! Wait. Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, and they're probably not going to get past. Well, 
They could get passed by Nashville. They could. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they could. And then you have the honor of playing like the Canucks or one of the Stars or Avalanche again. Yeah. Man, you play so well all year and you're rewarded with that. Um, I hate to say it. Like, again, Connor Hellebuck can steal you anything, um, but they've been banged up for a while. They haven't been playing their best for a while. I think they're one and done. Wow. Jesse Blake. Jets Avs? Yeah, let's say it's Jets Avs. Jets Avs or Stars Avs. Or, uh, or Stars Jets. Or what, what, did, what did you do? Well, Jet, he did both. You, you, he kind of did both. He, well, he, okay. <laughs> Who's favored? Jets or Avs in a series? I I think the Avs are favored, but I think the Jets upset. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, Jets or Stars? I'll take the Stars. Jets or Canucks? <sighs> That's a hard one. Right? Uh, Canucks. So, like, I'm not being a jerk by no, no, not, not picking the third seed. Yeah, no, 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 not, not at all. I just didn't know which one you did. Like, you think the Jets beat the Avs? I think the I think the Jets match up really well with the Colorado Colorado Avalanche, and they take care of business. And the Avalanche, I don't think they win a game. Uh, in what's it called? What's it called now? In the arena in Winnipeg. The Win- Winnipeg Arena. What do they call it now? I forget. Uh, isn't it the? It's not the cell phone company anymore. Is it still it, that? Winnipeg. Uh, Toffoli's Barn. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Toffoli in the playoffs. Canada Life. Canada, Canada Life, Life Center. Is that what That's right. It used to be the, the whatever, the, the Western. Yeah. It used, it yeah. Was, I, I know it changed. Anyways, I don't think they, they win a game there. I think the, the Jets will have home ice advantage in terms of like the Av- Avs aren't the greatest road team. And I think Hellebuck steals the series. There I you think go. it'll be fine. Okay. Does Matthews hit 70? No. Uh, well, missing a game really hurts. I, I think it shows you how seriously he's you know, taking the playoffs and he's prioritizing the playoffs over personal milestones. Players play through stuff all the time. He's not even at 60 yet. Um, he's, he's not hitting 70, I don't think. And Jesse, you said a flat no. Yeah, I, I think he misses two games here. I think it's going to be tough. Okay. Yeah. Uh, who wins the Hart Trophy? What a race. Like, Matthews is going to probably hit 65 and not even get nominated. Yeah. Like, he's going to be better than the year he won it. Um, and it's down to Kucherov, who is a monster. Yeah. And I think a lot more people are willing to vote for Kucherov now that Tampa is, like, for sure going to make the playoffs. You have Nathan McKinnon, who is also a monster. And you have Connor McDavid, who uh, I think probably finishes third. Connor McDavid is 31 points shy of 1,000 right now with 12 games to go. What did I tell you? Close. What did I tell you? He's uh, arm's reach. Arm's reach. Jesse, and would anyone put it past him? <laughs> Jesse, I know has some some interesting takes on this. What do you like? As Who do you like as the MVP? It's Nathan. It's Nathan McKinnon. It's Nikita Kucherov. I think it's, Whoa. Like, it's uh, uh, that's where my vote goes uh, easily to Nikita Kucherov. What he's done with the Tampa Bay Lightning in terms of his point share of of the of the goals they've scored, the amount of goals that he's been in on, and the just the gap from him to his next teammate. Right now, it's um, he has a hundred and twenty four points, and next up is Braden Point, who has. 81 points. Whoa! Like, it, that's a 43-point gap between him and his next closest teammate. He is, in the definition of the trophy, the most valuable player to his team. And he's been the most outstanding performer, I think, this season. I, I never actually gave you an answer. Um, Nathan McKinnon is an absolute monster. And most, most years, what he's done wins him the heart. For all the reasons Jesse just said, I think it's Cooch. Norris Trophy. That's the last one I'll do. And just for comparison, uh, McKinnon's at 123 points. Rantanen's at 97. Wow. So he has wow. at least a teammate who's in his like wheelhouse neighborhood. Yeah. You know, he lives down the street at least. Yeah. Nikita Kucherov, Braden Point, like lives in another city. Yeah. So Nikita Kucherov, by the way, is four points shy of his career high, 128 points. Yeah. You got to remember when guys vote on these awards. Um, they're going off what they've seen all season, but they're also going on what they've seen lately. Yeah. There, there's going to be a bias towards playoff teams, obviously. There's going to be a bias towards um, guys who have had ridiculously good stretches um, leading into the playoffs. That's why I think it's going to be Roman Yossi. Ooh. Roman Yossi. Yeah, uh, he's been he, amazing. And no one, we talked about this recently, no one remembers that he won in 2020. No one remembers yeah. that. 
Um, so I, I think he's going to win it this year, and it's going to mean more. Jesse. Uh, I think it's going to be Quinn Hughes. I think. Quinn Hughes? Yeah. I That's think, a good pick. I think it's just he's going to lead the league in the points by a defenseman. I think it's yeah. going to be run away uh, by the end of it. And I think for the longest stretch here, he's been the most outstanding defenseman. And like people like to harp on his defensive abilities, like McCarr's better. And he all laid that a hit stuff, this time. But... <laughs> I saw it. He's laid one hit. It was cool. <laughs> I got no problems with Quinn Hughes' defensive game. And I think where the Vancouver Canucks finish in the standings, I think he'll owe more... Uh, credence to the trophy than uh, Yossi will. I was I was being difficult with Roman Yossi. It's going to be Quinn Hughes, but mm-hmm. you know, got to be a hipster. I think all season it's looked like, hey, this is Quinn Hughes Norse Trophy year, and I don't I haven't wavered off of that. He won it like probably before American. Thing. It feels like he won it yeah. in November, and n- nothing he's done has been like taking him off of that pedestal. So no. I don't know. It is all right. Gentlemen, thank you very much. I wanted to just see where we were going into Easter. Uh, mm-hmm. And then once we come back here, like at the end of this, and we're going to do the press conference here in a second, but we, the next show we do will be in April. What? Yeah, Whoa. Uh, that's kind of crazy, though. <laughs> I think it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. <laughs> is it the calendar move? Yeah. You know what, Jesse? <laughs> you know <laughs> Experience college hoops like never before with BetMGM. How's your bracket, Steve? Uh... <laughs> Poor. <laughs> Poor. I'm not doing well. Well, listen, it doesn't have to be over for you. You can shoot your shots with all your favorite matchups. Jesse, how's your bracket going? Uh, my bracket's actually doing really well. But oh, I'm- shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up there battling with Drew in our uh, bracket challenge pool. Right now, I'm like really invested into the women's March Madness tourney because like Caitlin Clark is just a firecracker of, of energy on social media. Like the amount of people who are just interested in what she's doing, it's fun to watch. But like I'm fascinated to see if when she goes up against South Carolina, if they can uh, take her, take them down. Now, BetMGM has exciting state-of-the-art live tracking technology and dozens of sportsbook selections awaiting you on the BetMGM sportsbook. Tap into every game on your mobile device and enjoy the hoops like never before. Get off the sidelines and drive the basket. BetMGM is the king of sportsbook, guys. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. Must be 19 years of age or older. Ontario only. Please play responsibly. If you have any questions or concerns about your gambling or someone close to you, please connect with Connects Ontario. 1-866-531-2600 to speak to an advisor free of charge. Um, how, you know come, how come nothing I sent yesterday made the show? What? How come uh, Ted Leonsis didn't make it? Oh, did you want I sent to you another thing? Oh, yeah, you did. None of that, well, that made the show. No, here. What's, none of that made the show. Because F you, dude. That's why. Uh, okay. What is there no. to that story? So the Capitals are going to stay in Washington. Hey, Ted. <laughs> like, is that, is that well, all no, there? No, okay, no. Uh, yeah, because that was Virginia that rejected him. He's going to Maryland now. But then there was that. Now there's a rumor that Monumental Sports and Entertainment in the city did come to an agreement. No, it's not a rumor. They had a press conference. Yet. They did. Oh, yeah, okay. So All the right. mayor of DC and Ted. How Leo's much system. more money did they pony up? Uh, fifty million. They added to it. So it was five hundred fifty million versus. It was. It was five hundred, and then now I think it's five fifty. If I if I remember correctly, it might have been five fifty all along. All that sure. over fifty million dollars. Now I know yeah. fifty million dollars is a lot for us. No, well he wanted the whole thing covered. Like he wanted them to just pony up for the whole thing. Is that what he was arguing for? But they signed a deal to stay at Capital One in that district area through twenty twenty five, which is great for the people. Uh, twenty twenty five, twenty fifty. Got to get my numbers straight. Yeah, twenty fifty, which is a long time, which is great for the people of DC, and it's. Like, he lost. Like, he got rejected by Virginia, got rejected by Maryland. Like, he couldn't go find his other funds anywhere. And it's good to see that they're going to have a revitalization to Capital One Arena, which they desperately need. There's going to be a lot of infrastructure built around um, Capital One as well. Like, they're improving Chinatown, all this stuff. But And the city's ponying up $550 million, which is quite a bit. And I wish it was zero, but it's a thing. 550 over the next... Uh, 25 years, which is $22 million a year. It, it won't be like, no, that's how long they've agreed to stay there. Mm-hmm. That's just the revitalization project. Like, that's what they're going to, like, the improvements oh. won't take till 2050. No, it's going to take oh, years. Years. No, 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 years? no, no, no. Like, I mean, oh, okay. And it, I divided I, it weird. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to amortize it over the course of their length. There. I don't know. I've or, never made a purchase this big. Right, right. Yeah. And then the other thing I sent you was Martin Brodeur. 
I don't know if you have, oh, you have that in front of you. Too. Okay, yeah, you pull it up. Just pull it up. Okay. I, okay. I don't know which text conversation this came in. in okay. So, um, I, Broder yesterday or the other day spoke with uh, Pierre Lebrun of The Athletic, and he had some complaints about uh, the goalie situation around the National Hockey League. Mm-hmm. And he said to Pierre Lebrun in The Athletic, I think we baby our goalies, the New Jersey Devils executive vice president of hockey operations told The Athletic. I see it. I'm part of it. It's like my goalie coach will say he's played five games the past eight days. I'm like, so? Question mark. If I could fart harder, I'd throw up my back. The sport has changed, but the position has changed a lot just because of the workload that these guys are having. It's so volatile, that position. One year, you can be on the top of the goalie. Uh, You can be the top goalie. The second year, it's like you don't even belong in the league. It's weird how really volatile the position has become. It's the system of 1A and 1B that's going to create that because it's always going to be we can't play back-to-back games. You're so scared the number one gets hurt, and so you baby that guy for the longest time. So these guys are playing 55 games. They should be playing 65 to 70 games like we did. Thanks, Doc. Thanks, Doc. Like, you... (laughs) It's, it's, It's very interesting. I think... Because Martin Brodeur uh, was exemplary, was world class, was all time at stopping pucks, he now thinks he's all time at sports science. That's not how it works today. I also would. That's not how it works. How come no one's been able to do it? Like, either everyone is an entitled wimpy baby these days or that's simply not how it works and i think thinking that uh that's you know everyone's just a wimpy baby is a lazy dumb way of looking at the world can i suggest that and he's seen this the game has changed enormously when he was playing he was playing with the neutral zone trap gods who he you know he really only to stop 20 shots a game most of the time, right? Like, it, it was the dead puck era, and the Devils were amazing. Because your teammates at, had license to murder whoever they wanted. Well, but also, Steve, they weaponized the two-line pass rule with the blue or the red line. Yeah. And, and so they were able to shut you down in the neutral zone. Uh, and, yeah, so if you have a really quiet game and you're not going... I think there was some conversation with some other goalie about, like, how are these guys keep pulling their hamstrings and stuff? It's like, because the game's way faster than it used to be. Uh, Way faster. Kevin Weeks told me a story uh, years ago. I won't, I won't talk about the goalie that he was talking about, but Kevin Weeks was a he was a kid, mm-hmm. young kid growing up. I don't even know if he was playing junior, um, so he definitely wasn't drafted or in the NHL or anything. He was getting ready to go on the ice, um, or I think he was just finishing up a workout, and then an NHL goalie was coming on the ice after. Okay. And Weeks had this whole routine and he was getting ready and he was stretching this and he was stretching that. And and he goes to the NHL goalie. He goes, you know, how come you don't like stretch? And the, and the goalie said, you can't stretch fat. Ah. Or you can't pull fat can't is what he said. Fat, okay. He's like, I'm not going to get hurt. I don't have any muscles to injure, which is not how it works. No. At all. And that's a goalie who played in an era where you could play a bajillion games and it's it's not it doesn't work that way anymore. It just does not work that way anymore. And you're silly to think it can. Like that's I'm sorry, but it's disheartening when Brodeur has the career he has. He's then given a position of authority and he says something that's just so easily provably ignorant. You know what I mean? Ah, kids these days. Oh, well, there it is. Go sign, go sign a 50 year old then Martin, go sign someone in their fifties, go get a time machine or go fuck yourself. Like what? I'm so sick of this super. It's such a lazy way of thinking. Ah, kids these days. Now you're just every old man ever. Ugh. That's so disappointing. Shut up. (laughs) I don't know if I could say it any better. I, I wasn't is expecting it, dead silence. Is it that. surprising? No, I was just waiting for you to yeah. finish because I was going to ask, is it surprising considering how we've seen Martin Broder's career play out? I feel like this should be expected by the kind of guy that he's displayed as. You know, like him him being like, 
I don't, I don't know if there's a better word for it, but sort of hard headed in his during his tenure as an NHL goalie. Mm -hmm. I feel like th that mentality borns takes like this, you know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's ignorant then. Like, like, like take the Bennington Broder incident. Yeah. Well, because <laughs> Bennington out hard headed Martin. Broder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he rode that to a Stanley Cup. Like I don't I don't know. Like you hire someone who has the experiences that the the reason you hire a person like Martin Brodeur is his abundance of experience. Mm -hmm. And he gives you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't I mean, say that. He gives you no. No. Jesse, what about the? What about like the skills he can teach the goalie? Jesse, he he's <laughs> play, He won cups. He won Vesnas. He's in the Hall of Fame. He's arguably the greatest goalie of all time. And then you ask him about modern goalies, and yeah. he gives you the same answer you could find in any fucking coffee shop right, in North right. America. Are That's you serious? Point. Any you ask any random. If you walk up to a stranger, what do you think about goalies these days? And they'll give you some dumb fuck answer like You that. go to a coffee time. You see somebody, <laughs> see somebody uh, can drinking I be honest? coffee there by himself. He asked about hockey. But this is for the same reason why <laughs> I've never believed that only athletes can be on yep. sports panels. Uh, great that you played in the league. And, I sure, I'm, and, and some of, like, you look at the success of, like, a Paul Bissonnette, right? Mm -hmm. He's been extremely good at it. But I have seen 40 guys from the league... For every Paul Bissonnette. Yep. And it's because, um, it, and, and I see it a lot actually when I see some like some of these guys start their podcasts and stuff. And I won't name this specific show I'm talking about. But they, they start these shows and they don't, they don't know why no one likes them anymore. I'm a pro athlete. You used to like me. Why don't you like me anymore? And the reason you don't like you is because you don't know how to relate to fans. You're not a pro athlete anymore on my favorite team. And now your job is to relate to the people that are watching. Well, and you can't do it because you never were. And and that that part for me, it's like, okay, so you're giving me the, the, the theory about having athletes on panels. Mm -hmm. And I believe that there should be some. But it doesn't need to just be athletes. The theory about it is they're going to offer insights that the average person can't. And I have very in rare rare yep. situations seen it where it is so unbelievably different like honestly i i, I mean that and i'm a, i take say this as a person who produces content and watches content and is obsessed with how segments go on television and i'm obsessed with how they shoot it and how they light it and everything we all are i look at that and i'm like this is literally bad content from guy who played five seasons in the show and is getting a spot because some executive was like, Oh man, there's an NHL player talking to me. Like, it's just <laughs> like, it's just crazy, man. Like, I wish I, I knew who you were talking. Oh, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about. I and think I think, I uh, I think it's just it to me. It's one of those things where just like in management, there are some amazing examples of brilliant hockey players who turned into brilliant coaches and brilliant general managers. Mm -hmm. And then there's guys who were just people that learned it. Mm -hmm. Well, like, and who tried because that's just, Marty, Marty Brodeur's opinion there speaks to a guy to me who's like, I'm set in my ways and you can't teach me otherwise. I just, I can't believe that you like, what a resource. Can you see what a resource? It's like, d dude, you're asking the greatest goalie of all time, a goalie question. It's like asking God the meaning of life. And he gives you that. Well, and, like no one, no can one. Can you see, can you see? Joe Sackick saying something like that? I hope not. Can you see I, I Steve Eiserman saying not. something like that? God, I hope Can not. you see, like, I couldn't see Shani. Now, I know they're not goalies, but the point I'm trying to make here is those guys learned and moved with the time. Mm -hmm. What you're talking about with Marty is somebody who is out of touch. Well, like, it's just, it's just a disappointing nothing answer. And one thing that's th basically like, self-aggrandizing. We, I was so much better than these guys. A fart. Like there, there's, we're we're talking. This is an all-time great. But one thing, former NHLers, including former greats, do a miserable job of is selling today's game. They don't sell today's game. Call it what it is. This is the best hockey has ever been. Ever. 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 All of the goalies playing today are better than you. All of them. All of them. You put them in a time machine, put them back, put you in a time machine, put you forward. They're all better than you. They eat your food. All the players are playing with better equipment. They're fucking faster. They shoot harder. They shoot better. They're all better. 
It's never been better. The skill set is better. And you'll just never hear that. You just hear about how they're, ah, they're babies. I don't like dealing with their agents. Ah, they don't play enough games. Ah, they, they get sick all the time. They don't play through injuries like I do. You ever, they don't play through injuries like you do. You ever take a look at how your friends walk? <laughs> they look like emperor penguins. I don't know. I just, I, I cannot stand. I know, listen, I know for a fact, like I've talked to people, there are people at NHL head offices, mm -hmm. head office who hate us. There are people at NHL head office who love us and literally listen to every episode. There are people within the Leafs who hate our guts. There are people within the Leafs who love us and listen to every episode. And uh, we, I like to think we're fair about the stuff that we, w the stuff within the game that we criticize. Mm -hmm. And, but one of the things that I, I wish people would realize more is I'm the biggest champion of hockey fucking rules. The league is genuinely stupid about a lot of things, but hockey as a sport has never, 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 never in the history of ever been better than it is right now. And I cannot stand when legends like Marty Brodeur are just like, eh, guys, don't play enough games. Shut up. I like that. Do we have time for the press conference or are we going to wrap there? Uh, sure. On your point that uh, about like athletes starting podcasts and that sort of stuff, I was listening to a podcast recently and he was talking about uh, all the NBA player podcasts. And I forget which incident he was specifically referencing, but he, he, he was saying, I was like, I don't need to score 10,000 points in the NBA to say something dumb into a microphone. Like all these athlete <laughs> podcasts that are starting yeah, up. Yeah, look at it's, me. It's like I got zero <laughs> NHL points, and I talk all sorts right. of shit. No, these these guys like like Paul Pierce in particular. Like he he'll go on there and just say some like inflammatory stuff, and it doesn't add weight to what he's saying just because he played in the NBA. You know, like he hates today's NBA. Oh the, yeah, the arrogance to be like, give me a ten day. <laughs> right. He yeah. earnestly said, give me a ten day contract, and yeah. uh, Paul, they'd break your knees. Mm -hmm. They'd break your knees, Paul. You've been. There's you, a you reason think you just not play. There's a reason you're not playing right now. If you could be, you would be. You it's know? also a low stakes thing to say because he knows he's never getting one. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. it's just it's there to puff his own feathers. That, and that's, it. that's why so many people are like, no, come I on, Pistons. That. The Pistons yeah. got here. Put your money where your mouth is, Paul. <laughs> but I, <I'm, laughs> we got nothing to lose. Here well, you go. I'm a true believer that just because you played in the league doesn't mean you're entertaining in a micro on a microphone in, in like a studio setting or on a podcast or a radio show just the, yeah. the two things are like your knowledge of the game obviously is there but it doesn't mean you have good analysis it doesn't mean you can you're a good talker none of that just nope. because you played in the league there's it's a different skill set that should be so concerning to every devils fan that this guy is what was the vice president of hockey operations? Listen, you have the greatest goalie of all time on staff. Why do your goalie suck? Mm -hmm. you, you finally well, did you see you finally the traded for a good one. Did you see you the VTech? Did you see the VTech Vanacek quote? No. He well to start the season, Lindy Ruff said by the end, of, you know, he's like by the end of his time here, I think they're going to be building statues to VTech Vanacek. Yeah. And then when asked about the Devils in in San Jose, he's like, don't want to talk about it. Like as in like something happened. Who said that? Ruff Vanacek. Oh, He's in San Jose now. So wait, Ruff on his way out? No. Sorry. At the start of the season, the Lindy season. Ruff was really bullish on his team. And why yes. not? Why so not? what he said was, Vitek Vanacek, they're going to build statues to this guy. Like he was puffing him up, which is great. That's great. what you want your head coach to say, fantastic. Good. Whether or not he really meant it, who cares? They thought he was going to have a good year. Now it's 60 games later, 70 games later. Vanacek is a San Jose Shark, and he doesn't want to talk about what happened in New Jersey. And we also... Remember, have the Bennington story uh, where Broder with St. Louis told him, you're going down. And he said, no, I'm not. <laughs> and, and he went to Providence. Yeah. I'm wondering if I don't know. Well, I just wonder if that's connected. Maybe there's a uh, maybe there's an ethos that isn't working. I mean, why is it? It's crazy. You do have one of the best goaltenders of all time. And you've had some of the worst goaltending of all time this year. Because being the greatest goalie ever doesn't necessarily make you great at teaching bestowing it upon he's also not the goalie coach yeah yeah but what's the point what's the point of having a goalie coach you have martin broder and he knows so much better and you know what acts the whole sports science department too ah you don't need him bunch of quacks quack quack get him out of there
Get them out of there. And also, I beat the Ducks in the Stanley Cup Finals. So what do you even need quacks for? And it's just... <laughs> Stop. It's, uh, it's, it's just... I don't know. I just... I, I, Steve, why are you so triggered? I am. I am. I, I don't... I'm, I'm triggered by, for some reason, hearing the greatest resume, at very least, in the history of goaltending, just say something any jerk could say yeah. anywhere. I had my doubts about Wayne Gretzky on the air, but listening to him Fantastic. talk, he's been amazing. You know part of the reason why he's worked out so well? He's okay. He he's doesn't get time. on air and go, hey, you know today's NHL sucks. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get on the air and do that. And also, he's just like, like someone at TNT was like, hey, Wayne, you're Wayne Gretzky. And he went, oh, I am. Should I just tell stories? And they're like, yes, Wayne, you should. And he just tells stories and they're always the best. One thing Wayne has is a reverence for today's game. Yes. Like he, it's, it truly yes. seems like he's a fan of today's players, and it's, it comes through on the microphone. He's somebody who is really good at doing the the on-air TV stuff. And uh, um, what, was, what point was he going to make? And so, yeah, Wayne Gretzky, I think, is a great example of like an athlete who, if he goes to a certain uh, medium, he's great at it. But Wayne Gretzky wasn't a great head coach. Yep. <laughs> no, no. Wayne Gretzky isn't good at teaching other people how to be Wayne Gretzky. Yep. Wayne Gretzky is great at talking into a microphone and talking about the game today and analyzing and talking about the games that he's watching. But these are all different skills. And Martin Brodeur might be a great. He he might be the greatest podcaster of all time. We Maybe. haven't had we haven't had given him that opportunity. Marty, yet. just tell us stories. <laughs> right. Yeah. But just Martin Brodeur, stories. as an executive whose job it is to analyze a team isn't good at that just because he won a lot of games as a goalie. Now, maybe I'm carving the guy a little too much for one quote, but it's right. it's a really shitty quote. Right. But I don't there you shouldn't assume that Brodeur is going to turn around the Devils franchise and their goaltending just because he himself was good at hockey. Like and I feel like a lot of that's a lot of reason some of these people are in these positions is because you say you were good at this. You could you scored goals. I'm gonna put you in charge of our team and hopefully you can make them score goals. Those are different skills. Your knowledge applies to that, but some people aren't good at applying that knowledge. Yeah. So or just do we need to do a don't, press or don't conference say now? anything interesting. Uh let's do. do one little trivia thing. All right, I let's think do it's really fun because oh, yeah. it came up kinda in our show today. Okay. <laughs> press conference now, now to make up with devil's fans am i gonna have to put on uh devil's de pajamas, devil's pajamas? Oh, yeah. i know somebody's got a good set mm. uh the cack said who's adam's favorite character in home alone <laughs> Funny. <laughs> fuller obviously uh magic mitch said is adam going to keep pretending he didn't put a home alone character in a christmas story <laughs> oh my god <laughs> it's uh Everybody's asking. All right, well, Adam, this... if you played 70 games this season, you wouldn't say such stupid shit. Though. Yeah, Adam. I know. If you played in the show, you would have had some good takes about Home Alone. All right. True. But True. this is from uh, Smile for 35. Maddie, you got to get out a notepad because we're going to do name oh. all oh, NHL shit. arenas trivia. I so thought of it 4 a.m. What Why? we're going to do is... It's, anybody didn't catch that? At Smile for 35 says, can Stephen Adam name all current NHL arenas? That's so, so ironic because we couldn't name the Winnipeg. Canada yeah, that's, Life Center. That's, why think, Life. that's why I think we got to bring this up. So I'm going to I'm gonna set the bar. Mm -hmm. You guys can combine your heads. You're going to give me one answer for each team. Mm -hmm. If you get, what's a fair number? 24? What about yeah. 16? That's halfway. No. No. You, you got to get more. Get 24 out of 32. All right, all right, all right. Or 25. All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, whatever 70% is. That's okay. like my grade in high school. Okay, what, what's that, What's around 70? Yeah. Uh, let's, he, let's set, say set the number. 25. 25. 25. You got to get 25 right. That's so many. All right. That's a lot. Right, no, no. But you I name the team. We'll, you have to name the team, though. No. Jesse will name the teams. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm naming the teams. Yeah, I'll give I don't want to be like, I don't want to think about the city and then think about the yeah, We're right. going to go in uh, 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 alphabetical order. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. 20, oh, if man. you hit 25, you win. You only get to submit one answer for each team. Oh. This is going to be a good time. First up, the Anaheim Ducks. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I have no idea. 
<laughs> oh, no. I have, um, oh, no, guys. Uh, uh, Snoop Dogg. Are, no. Oh, no. I thought this was an easy I, one. I, 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 it, maybe it is. Uh, Facebook Arena. I don't know. <laughs> no, they isn't have, it? Um, you guys going to submit an answer? I feel like it's a, it's a phone company. It is. It I is a phone know. company. Um, <laughs> Verizon. Verizon? Verizon Center. <laughs> no, I don't think it's Verizon Center. What is it, Jeff? This is fun. Uh, is the Honda Center. Oh! oh! I should have known that. You should have known that. that. It's Never near San Diego. That. Damn. All right. Arizona. Mall Arena. Arena. Boston. TD, TD Garden. Garden. Yeah. Buffalo. Oh, oh. This has changed. It has. But it's been this for a little bit now. But have I been there? No. No, not since it's been this. Oh, sh yeah. shit. Oh, we should really know this one. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> they play the Canadian National Anthem every game. Yeah, we should know this. I'm embarrassed. They're very nice to us. I'm also freaking tired, man. Um, okay. They're very nice okay. to us. Okay, okay, okay. The Pagulas own it. The Pagula Center. <laughs> Pagula Perugula. Per the <laughs> Key Bank Center. Shoot. Yes, I did know that. Damn. The <laughs> Calgary Flames play. Scotiabank Sabagum. Excellent, Adam. There you go. The This is a hard one. The Carolina Hurricanes. <gasps> Son of a bitch. I'll give you a hint. Adam should know this. I should know this. Mm -hmm. Virgin? No. Not Virgin. No. Virgin. Virgin Radio. Oh, okay. The, he said Adam should know it. What is it? The Maryland Dennis Center? I don't freaking know. Oh, no, well, it, um, the the, uh, the people who own the naming rights have ties to an area that Adam knows. Perth? <laughs> Scarborough? <laughs> oh, okay. Perth? Hold on, hold on. Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh. It's got to be Pittsburgh. Could it be? And it's got to be like, a, is it? Is it? Oh, uh, it's a health thing, isn't it? It's the health company, isn't it? Your insurance or something? Heinz. You're getting there. Uh, um, PNC, not, well, there's PNC Park in Pittsburgh, which is a baseball stadium. Oh. Is it PNC Arena? What's your guess? Uh, let's go with that. What is it? PNC Arena? PNC Arena. Ah! Yeah! <laughs> Amazing. I gave I gave Amazing. you a, I gave you a mountain Amazing. of hate. You did, you did, you and then face suggestions. Why why they went with Carolina? I don't know. Uh, PNC yeah PNC Park is where the Pittsburgh Pirates play. That's right. So that's a, oh. that was your hint. Uh, Chicago Blackhawks. It's easy. Oh um f uh, United Center. Thank you. Uh, I said this one earlier. Colorado a Colorado Avalanche. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> you guys. Dude, it doesn't matter. Like, the arena name doesn't matter. No, it never matters. <laughs> like, it, it doesn't. Neither does yeah, Fuller, but I everybody thought that was fucking I hilarious. I said this in the show. I'm pretty sure today. I don't, did you? Yeah, yeah, I said this. Because I was talking about uh, McKinnon and the Avs not being able to play it on the road. Something power or, like, Excel. <gasps> Is it not the Excel Center? No, Excel. No. Excel Center. <laughs> no. It's not. No. Excel Gum. <laughs> I have no idea. You guys, I'm the slightest clue. I know Drew's gonna kill us. We start the show. We started the show for years. I know. No, we you, you don't know because we started the show no. for years. And, and Steve's right. The talking about the apps. Um, for for like two years on the show that we started the show. Mile High Center. No Ball Arena. <laughs> oh, Balls. That's manscaped. That's dumb. We should. There were the there were the. Pre that also wasn't years. a good clue. Yeah, yeah, you didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Columbus Blue Jackets. Oh my god, I've been there. Oh my god, <laughs> you, it's the same name from when you were there. I'm pretty sure. I should have lowered uh, this bar. You're yeah, right about man. 16. <laughs> we should have just done 16 teams. <laughs> this I, is I, how little it matters. I know it doesn't matter. I don't give feel me, so bad for not knowing if you don't know. Give me something. Uh, the Hive. No, there is like, isn't it like a, is there a university connection there? No. Okay. I don't know. I'm going to hate Steve? this. Steve? I'm going to know this. Do you have anything? It's like some, uh, uh, I can feel it. Steve, anything? Oh. Don't know. Nationwide Arena. Fuck. Ah! Dallas. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> guys. I don't know oh my oh. gosh, you guys are bad. Uh. Adam got up at four, and I have a newborn. Uh, oh, excuses. My brain feels like a piece of shit. Please submit more excuses. I don't know, man. doesn't matter you have to leave here. Let's end the show. It doesn't... Uh, the, the, the... 
the um, Planet Arium. No, I don't know. American Airlines Center. Who cares? Okay. I knew that Like, one. you're yelling at me for not knowing the sponsor. I know that one because... Uh, uh, you don't know it's American brands. Sponsor followed by center or arena. This, or one, this one's like, easy. who cares? The okay. Red Wings. Uh, oh, uh, um, Little Caesars. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Little Caesars I, Arena. I Oilers. So, okay, is this Rogers Place or Rogers Arena? I think Rogers Arena is Vancouver. So I'm going to say Rogers, Rogers Place. Place. Correct. Yeah. And Florida we got Vancouver, too. Florida Panthers. If you listen to the CJ show, they said it on last episode. Dale Arena. Mr. 305. Uh, I don't know, man. Uh... Picture that. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be <laughs> FL Live. Oh, wow. That's when I knew it. Um, <laughs> Snowbird Center. I don't know. Amerant Bank Arena. What the fuck is that place? They recently changed it. If you listen to the show, they Marant talk about Bank? it. Amerant Bank? Amerant Bank. Amerant Bank. Uh, Clipper. Oh, Clippers. <laughs> Kings. Was that Crypto.com? Yeah, Crypto. <laughs> yes, Crypto.com. Minnesota Wild. This is an easy Wait, one, too. Wait, is that too. the XL Center? Maybe. Ah, let's go with it. Yeah. What, yeah. what what is it? there's another word in there? XL Energy Center. XL yeah. Energy Center. Well done. Montreal. The Bell, Bell Center. Center. Nashville. Bridgestone Center. Nope. Bridgestone Arena. Thank you. Oh. That, okay. That's a that's a oh. correct answer. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bridgestone Arena. Devils. Easy. Oh, that's Prudential. Prudential what? Center. Yeah. Correct. Easy. New York Islanders. Oh, UBS oh. Arena. Yeah. Easy. New York Rangers. That's MSG. Ottawa Senators. Canadian Tire Center. Thank you. Philadelphia Flyers. Uh, Comcast. Uh, isn't it the Comcast <laughs> Spectrum Center or something like that? Comcast Live. Well, it's Comcast. Live. I know the place across the street is Xfinity Live or whatever. Maybe it's Xfinity Arena. It's a bank, I'm pretty sure. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, it is. They're all bank. banks. This this one's a bank. What is it? Oh, oh wait. You uh, got it. It's a bank. You, don't, you can't look up banks. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's cheating. It's a bank. Oh, I wasn't looking at banks. Sorry, there was my YouTube's open on my on my thing, and I was just you get money from them. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, uh, great hint. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, need a loan? Go to these guys. Wells Fargo. Excellent. Ah, hey. yes. Wells Fargo. What? Center. Uh, correct. For anyone yelling at us, we're Canadian, and we don't have that here. Pittsburgh. PPG Paints Arena. Yep. Thank you. San Jose. This should be a SAP Center. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Seattle Kraken. Uh Climate Pledge Arena. Excellent. God, you're fast. I went I went there this uh this summer and I saw Climate Pledge. I didn't go You didn't go in. Yeah. No, I was outside of it. The St. Louis because they weren't playing hockey. That's right. <laughs> the St. Louis Blues. This is another place I've been. I've yeah, you've been there. They they've changed the name of this, I'm pretty sure, since you've been there. In the last five years? Yeah. Oh. I don't think it was named this. The St. Louis Arch is overrated arena. We went Blues Center. I don't think you're ever going to get this one. Okay, what is it? Uh, a car. There's your hint. Okay. Hyundai Place. Who's advertising? Wah. It's a car? <laughs> Wah Center. <laughs> oh, uh, they might have been named 2018. Were you there? I was there 29th. I was there tw January 2020. Wow. Okay, so yeah, it would have been named this. And it's a car, car company. Well, not Honda. I, mean, nope. I guess not. Could be got one of those. Just the, give me a car company. The Mazda Memorial Dollar Center. I'm going to say... What's your guess? <laughs> it's something... Sure. Center. Center? It yeah. is a center. It's the center. Yeah. I watched a game that was in this building <laughs> you got three days ago. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Enterprise Center. Who gives... Uh, that's not a car company. That's a rental that's, car see, that's, company. That's yeah. a rental company. That was the trick. The trick threw us off. Yeah. That's, what got, that's, what, yeah. that's oh, yeah, why you didn't get it. We needed the trick to throw us off. Tampa Bay. Oh, you should know this. They've played should, so Evan, many playoff my brain games is there, not the Leafs. On it. Oh, You've been I've there, been here Adam. Four or five times. Yeah. You've literally walked into this arena. It's still the same name all those years you've went. And it never mattered. <laughs> hey, hold. Hey guys, here's LFR. Here's everything that happened in the game over the next twenty minutes, and I'm gonna yell and scream and I'm gonna sweat. And no 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 Steve, slow down, slow down, slow down. What was the arena called? <laughs> no one's ever asked me that. You can't. You don't. You don't have a guess for this. The one? Thunderdome. You don't have a guess for this one. This one's. Uh, it should be a slam dunk. The PPG Thunderdome. Oh no. I don't know. I can't remember. Amelie Arena. Amelie. Uh, I should have known that. What is Amelie? What is Amelie? I don't know. 
I've I've heard that name on the arena. First of all, didn't retain that information. Second of all, every time I have heard it, never once was like, I wonder what that product is. It looks like they're an oil company. Oh, Amel- Amelie I buy Emily Oil now. Then. They make Amelie motor oil. oil. Yeah. Oh, like man, <laughs> uh, Toronto, Scotia Bank Arena, uh, Maple Leaf Gardens, <laughs> Vancouver, Rogers, Rogers Arena. arena. You got to nail these last. You're going to hopefully go five for five here. You up. So we did Toronto. We did Vancouver, which is Rogers Arena. Vegas. Oh, my God. You Oh, how do we not know? Yes. I know. I know. Yeah, Ma- Maddie, what did you just say? I know this one. Oh, well, God. If, if they held their media day in this building, I might know it. You guys. But I don't because they held it in friggin Henderson. You guys, this is. This is a sad effort. Earth, this one I should know. I yeah, should, I, I should this know is that. a sad effort. I should know they this. awarded the Stanley Cup final there less than a year ago. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The when the Mad MGM when the Leafs went Coyotes mullet and then to this place, I was like, oh, we get mullet and then blank because the atmospheres we get two different. Don't know. T-Mobile. Ah, you whatever. guys know that Damn. one. Brutal. We don't have oh, that here. That's bad. I don't give a shit. <laughs> that's bad. All right, and what else we got? Washington, I said it today like 20 minutes ago. Ted Leones is swinging his dick all over Tech. I said it center. 20 minutes ago. Monumental what? sports arena. No. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Capital One Arena. <laughs> there you go. Winnipeg. Canada Life yep. Center. Canada Life Center. Center, yeah. How many is that, Maddie? Okay, twenty-one right and eleven wrong. Oh, you got twenty. We got twenty. There's no. There's, way. <laughs> there's yeah. absolutely we no way we got twenty-one right. No, they did. I would switch the numbers and still be surprised we got to eleven. Yeah. Are you sure? Well, no, it's because you gave them second chances on a lot of things. You're like, ah, oh, well, we'll do this one right actually. Because okay. like center, you said center place for a lot of them. All right, that was agony. You guys you said are bad. they had to get at least 25 right, which they did. Yeah, they didn't do that. But. I've been pro expansion. That's 21? I've been pro expansion. Yeah. I want the NHL to retract to like, I don't know, seven or eight teams just so that I don't have to play that ever again. I honestly thought you'd be so much better at that. No, because like it doesn't matter. It absolutely doesn't matter. It might not matter, but it might be knowledge that you have. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> most, that's, that's, uh, 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 that's I think most that's the fans, that's the thing about trivia. Yeah, it doesn't have to matter. No, it's just trivia. Most fans couldn't get to ten. Oh, look! Look at the camera, Maddie. Put on solo cam. Look into the camera. Challenge everybody. What did you well, get? Without cheating. What did you get? Most fans could not name ten of oh. the arenas currently in the NHL. We just got 21 out of 32. I didn't say that. I just I want said you to that. know that. I didn't say that. Let us know how many you got right playing along. And if you got more than 10, Steve's you know, going to come to your house and he's going to kiss you. You know how many, how many people are just going to be like, oh, you got 32. <laughs> on the forehead. Uh, lovingly on the forehead. Yeah, like a little <laughs> forehead kiss before before you go to bed. A little kiss. Yeah. All right. Now are we wrapping? <sighs> All right. I'm exhausted. Oh, man. I'm glad we know about fucking uh, cell phone place. I just... <laughs> I thought you cell knew. Cell phone kiosk center. I thought you'd know. <laughs> you know, if I played over 70 games, I would have got it. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter. At Steve underscore Dangle. At Adam W-Y-L-D-E. And at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.